They announced the network number. That's how long. I know. I know. We haven't even talked about the well, network. Well, it was last Thursday. We knew that the uh, we the, were going to do an audio over numbers it. were going to come out um, last Thursday, and uh, they did. Listen, I don't want to toot our own horn. Two this is two weeks in a row. Last week I got to brag about telling everybody for fucking over a year now TNA will not see the end of 2014. Yeah, I bragged last week. This week, get up the chat room. You got the chat room? I can't. Okay. Oh, uh, it doesn't work, really. It's my, I had it off since the storm. I got raw right there. All right, try to try to load up the chat room if 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 we can. If we can't, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll plug in the keyboard. Oh, that's right. You yeah. can't even put the add-on thing. Oh, uh, all right. Or you don't have it in the show file where you can take. Didn't didn't I send you the show file? No. A long time ago. I could. Uh, let's think. All right. Well, anyways, listen. So this. Let me run it down. This is what we're gonna do tonight. Sorry, we're a little bit late. We got caught up. We were so. Uh tuned in to the Country Music Awards that are airing right now oh, on I was, ABC. You I couldn't mean, peel me away You had me. Tim McGraw or somebody out there. <laughs> to you, they might be the Country on Music stage. Awards. To me, they'll always be the CMT Awards. The CMT. The, the, no, I think it's the AMTs. The American the American Country Music Awards or, or something something like that. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Um, something Something like that. That uh, that is going on tonight on uh, on ABC. But anyway, so tonight what we're going to talk about uh, WWE financials. Last Thursday, WWE came out and announced all the financials. Seems like it a was lifetime ago. Not a good yeah. quarter report, and we knew that going in. What we expected, not everybody else, but we weren't shocked at all. At least I was. Well, as far as the network numbers are concerned, but the the entire quarter itself was just. Wow! It was you know what I mean. It was everything. So they uh, offset it with all them uh, cuts, so the stock went up. That's what we're going to talk about. You know. That's what we're going to talk about is the network and what that seven hundred thousand figure means. Please be logged in. Please um, be logged in. Please be logged in. Please be logged in. <laughs> there we go. All right. Here we are. We're in the uh, we're in the chat room now, so we can see what you guys are uh, are talking about tonight. But uh, no, listen. Um, the the seven hundred thousand number that they released, I mean, it's actually six ninety. It's six ninety, which we'll get into in a little bit. It was seven hundred by June thirtieth. Okay, that was the number they announced. Right. Actually, and that was when they were doing that. Other than last night, it was the most blatant hawking of the network that they did on TV. Dude, it was a, it was an infomercial. Last night, was last night was a joke. Infomercial. But around the June thirtieth number was they knew by June thirtieth, the day of June thirtieth, that's the day. That we stop counting, and that's the number we're going to announce. Right, right. So they wanted to do everything possible to make that. That's when they're doing the free weeks, and you don't even need a credit card. And even we signed up. They got us with that. And uh, the shop merchandise, and uh, get a friend to sign up, and you get this and that, like, and all that stuff. And they still, after that, lost ten thousand people immediately, like within days. Ten thousand right. people, or actually, it was a hundred and. Do you have the official number? And it was people, 128, 128,000 people, people canceled. People that have already since paid. The last quarter. Why not let your six-month subscription run out and then, as it when it expires, okay? But why are they canceling at five months in or four months in? Why are they canceling? Why are they? Canceling? Why, are they canceling? I've heard why not let it play out? I would wonder the same thing, but I've heard conflicting things, and I know somebody in WCR chat once proved me wrong on this, but I'm still hearing. That it doesn't immediately charge you sixty dollars when you sign up. It charges you ten. It charges you whatever it does, but not the full six months, sixty dollars right then and there. Because if, what people will do is either sign up on PayPal or they'll get like one of them gift cards that acts as a credit card. You can yeah. use as a credit card, right? And it'll only have ten dollars on it or twenty or whatever it is. Okay. And that'll get you to sign up. And then when they go to rebill you, there's nothing there to rebill, okay. or they'll cancel their right. PayPal account or okay. they'll cancel their okay. or whatever. All right, no doubt. But I've heard people doing that, so that would be why they're canceling. Otherwise, like you said, who the hell would spend sixty dollars and then go out of their way, go the through the process of canceling when they've already paid for it? It's already covered. You might as well just wait until August or that's September when it true. expires, and then and then cancel. Yeah, there's something up with that. But anyway, see, yeah, so see, they say in the chat it's every month they bill you. Okay, they say they bill you every month. So what but people would do is you sign up, you get your whatever you sign up. Let's say they sign up for one pay per view. You spend nine ninety nine. You're okay. gonna get your pay per view in the in that thirty day period, and then you right. cancel before they rebuild you. Okay. Yeah, they're all saying. That. All right. All right. No doubt. So all right. That, that's, what, that's what it is. All yeah. right. So here's here's the Steve deal. Steve that motherfucker. <laughs> you see what he's in? Boom, my friend. You need to drop a few pounds. Oh, that's a tough. 
touchy subject. Yikes. Right in the heart, bro. Yikes. Oh, no, man. Be a fan. Listen, I, I see you every day. <clears throat> I see yeah, you every day. Notice. Yeah, but you know what? When people come on here, and you've seen it in the chat room, it's happened on here, people say, damn, Clark's got chubby cheeks, this, that, and the other thing. And sometimes you I'm do. like, man, I do have chubby cheeks. Yeah. I do. I know I have They're chubby right cheeks. Too. <laughs> I know I've said, but they, when 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 somebody tells you, I like honesty though. I love no, honesty. I do too. I love so it. So the fact that he said that is. I just thought it'd be funny. Right. Make fun of me. Anyways, so, yeah. but uh, so anyways, so the network numbers, and we're gonna run it down here in hour number one. But we're gonna tell you why seven hundred thousand is not a good number. And if you, uh, the proof in the pudding the was last there, night on Raw. The kids out there don't want to get fat. Lay off of these. Lay off the beers. Lay off of these. If they but, if watching Raw. You were saying, watching Raw. It's it's it, the the proof that the numbers sucked was if you watched Raw last night. Raw was one big infomercial for the WWE <laughs> Network for nine ninety nine nine ninety nine every single segment. I took trying, it a different way, trying to get people to sign up. But here's the deal: okay. the seven hundred thousand number that is not a good number. They expected one million by the end of the year domestically in the United States. They're not even going to come close to, yeah. to, to one million. It's not even. People are going to once their six months are, are up, people are going to drop like flies, and very few new ones are going to come, which is why they're trying to plug. But the fact of the matter is, seven hundred thousand. They wanted one point four for domestic, and probably another one point four for overseas. Seven hundred thousand. Something, something exactly half of one point four. Right, but they <laughs> wanted they wanted exactly. They're not half, doubling that. They wanted the they wanted exactly half of what they projected. They wanted you know two years from now one point four domestically in the United States, maybe another one point four overseas. You would be up around two point eight million, something like that, somewhere around there. They would turn a profit. They realized in the past couple of months these numbers are not what we expected. We're not going to hit a million by the end of the year. So what do we need to do to offset this and to still make the network succeed? We need to do $30 million in budget cuts. So they go and they do all these cuts, and they've cut something like $20 million already. Cuts are still ongoing. So the 700000 figure is now not all that bad. If you get 800,000 people domestically, and another 800,000 overseas, and you come up with 1.6 million or 1.5 million between domestic and overseas, They're not you're going gonna, to you're gonna turn a profit. You're going to turn a profit because you have cut $30 million in cost. That's the reason for all these budget cuts. These budgets cut, let me tell you something. If the network was going to hit a million and they were going to get 1.4 domestically, you would not have seen these budget cuts. You're going to see some budget cuts here and there, but you're not going to see $30 million in budget cuts. The reason they did that is to offset the network numbers so that they can still turn a profit. You covered too much for me to respond to there. The, the original point I was trying to chime in with was the raw thing, the 999. I thought I didn't take that as, oh God, we need to really hammer this home now and, and make it an infomercial for the network. I took it as they're mocking the people that think that, you know what I'm saying? Like they're mocking the fact that the reaction to the number is, oh my God, this and that, and it's like. Well, and the fact that they're driving it so hard on TV, I think they're mocking the people who say that kind of stuff by saying, well, let's go out there and just blatantly fucking, for nine ninety nine a month, you know, but right, like right. DX used to do with their merchandise. You can get this great t-shirt here at WWE. Right. They right. would do that kind of stuff, whereas it was completely obvious to me that, that they're just making fun of the situation. Making Is fun it, of the situation, but in the process, it's trying, still true. To, trying to get people... It, it, they're making fun of the situation, but it's still true. They do need to pour it out yeah, right, and, get, right, and, right. and get whatever they can get. The other thing is 1.4 or whatever your number you threw out between international and... No, no, no. Between both, you said they need how 2. much? 2.8. You... Not their expectations. What they need now that they've done all these cuts to break even. Oh, what they need now with the thirty million cuts? I don't know. Now. Probably about one point five million. Yeah, they're not getting. They're not getting barely over a million with international inclusion. Oh, wait a minute. I got news for you. If they got if they got seven hundred thousand domestically in the United States right now, they've got six hundred ninety thousand. But no, not domestically. Lot. They don't in the United States right now. That's what they're claiming. A lot. Not not a large percentage. Maybe five, six, seven percent of that six ninety. Is international subscriptions? People don't realize that. I know there is a lot of hardcore fans who are the people that are prone to spend money on something like this, especially in a market where it's not your local whatever. You know, this is an international thing. It'd be like us signing up for Pride back in the day. 
you know, because it was popular in America, but it was not our, like, we had UFC. It wasn't like what we, it wasn't our only uh, project, product of this kind, you know, of this kind, of this type. There was UFC here, but, you know, the real hardcore fans also like Pride, even in America. Right. So, like, people like me, I'd stay up till 7 a.m. to watch a fucking Japanese stream of Japanese commentary to yeah. see if Rampage could beat Vandalay in the rematch. Because right. I was that big of a fan. These right. WWE Network fans overseas are the same the International, exactly. If mm-hmm. you're going to be the type of person that's going to spend money for WWE, not just turn the damn channel on, which they're having trouble doing as it is, you know, with the ratings and stuff like that are going down. Right. They can't even get people to watch for free, let alone pay. The guys right. that will pay are the die-hard fans. A lot of those die-hard international fans have already found a way right. to sign up for this watch. thing. So right. that what they don't right. understand is, not a large percentage, but the real die-hard people that it's somehow possible for them to sign up, they found a way. Now, when they expand and really officially roll it out and promote it and this and that in the international markets, they're going to get a lot a lot of sign up. Right. But a lot could mean 150,000, 200, 250,000. It doesn't mean it's going to match or even come close I think, I think to the number that signed up now. I think we're going to max out when it's all said and done, when it's in Canada. Give your prediction. Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom, the United States, when we're all maxed out, I think, and this is everywhere, not just the United States, I think we're going to max out because keep in mind, we're at 700,000 now. 690. People are going to drop off. Once their six month subscription yeah. expires, well, we, especially with no original content, no Legends House, no Tough Enough, all this stuff. It's, it's, it's important no to jump in before you go with too many more points here. We, me and you, talked about this a couple of weeks ago, a month or two no, we ago. We talked about it last week going into the financial. You don't even know where I'm going. You said 750000 I uh-uh, said 700000 uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm talking about the fact that everybody just assumes that number is going to go from here and just keep going this way. No, it's not. No, when that six-month loop right. comes up, you're lucky if you're right. at the same level at the 690 that you are now. When that six months is up you're and WrestleMania down. is not part of your down. next six-month six package, which it won't be for that 690,000 people or how, 583,000, however many people signed up for WrestleMania, before WrestleMania, during WrestleMania. When that group of people, which is the big, giant bulk of the people they've got right now, 80%, I'll say, just to throw in a guess out, signed up either before or during or for WrestleMania. When those six months are up, and they look in, they're looking at another six months, WrestleMania is not part of that next six they months. They get the Royal Rumble, they get Survivor Series, but they don't get WrestleMania. Yeah, and that's right. what you sign up for, is, right. the, is the deal WrestleMania. on WrestleMania. So Let me say this. That Let number could this. potentially go down. Y'all are gonna cr- you're going to call me crazy, right? We're going to say 700,000. I know it's 690, but let's just, we'll even it out. 700,000. In another month or two, a lot of those people in the United States that have signed up, their six-month subscription is going to expire. A lot of them are going to take off. They're going to leave. A bunch of them are going to renew. Don't get me wrong. A couple hundred thousand are definitely going to renew. No doubt about that. But there's also going to be a hundred, maybe even two hundred thousand that drop off. I wouldn't be surprised to see a big drop off like that. Then you go out, you launch overseas, you launch in Canada, you know, pretty much everywhere else. I think when it's all said and done, when it's all said and done, Everywhere, the WWE Network, one million or one point one million. Should have did the awesome all said and done. All said one and done. million, one million <coughs> around one million. And this was their original projections. Their original. You got to understand. If they're at seven hundred thousand now, this is my thinking. If they're at seven hundred thousand now, in another month or two, I'm going to say one hundred and fifty thousand people drop off. You're taking it down to 550,000. Then you get the overseas signups, you get the Canadian signups. I'm going to say 400, 500,000 there. You add 550,000 to 450,000, you get 1 million, 1.1 million. It's going to be around 1 to 1.1 million. All said and done, the original projections that were 1.4 original- were 1. 4 in the United States and total Everywhere they were thinking two point five to three million. They're gonna wind up at about one million. Yeah, I don't remember what all their projections were. I'll take your word on that. My prediction. Yeah, what do you think? About a million. Whole ball of yarn by the end of the year. About a million. Yeah, I agree. If well, no, with the international, yeah, about a million because they're gonna lose some of that. They're not growing on that seven six ninety. We act like ten thousand is not a lot of people. That's a fucking lot of people. Ten thousand. That's right. a TNA pay-per-view times two sometimes. We came on here. Let me uh, say one more thing. Yeah. We came on here last week, and we said, what are they going to reveal for the network numbers on Thursday? I think 
I said 720,000, and I think you said 750, uh, and you were being generous. I know what I wrote in a column, and it's okay. up there, and the date is before they announced the number. I said I could see as high as 750, 750 right. or as low as 715 is what I said. Okay. So anywhere between 715 and 750 was my official prediction. And I went with 720, I and guess. they came at 700,000. And the reason for this is because we talked about it last week. We went on an hour rant about it last week. Is that people are already dropping off. If they think that they're going to just get 200,000 new subscribers for, you know... A free t-shirt? Uh, uh, for, for whatever. Yeah. It's not, the numbers aren't just going to shoot up. You're going to get that original when the network launches, WrestleMania. You're going to get bang. You're going to get 500,000 people right then and there. If you can get 500,000 people, if you can only get 500... As soon as I saw the first numbers come out, and it was at what? Uh, 667. 667. And I'm thinking 667. Well, I was thinking like eight, nine hundred thousand. You know, maybe even a million. You're thinking the WrestleMania right. party, at least a right. metric plus whatever would be. You know, it's not in, good. In the These numbers are not good, and WWE clearly recognizes that, which is why they went out and, and Vince McMahon ordered thirty million dollars in cuts all across the board at Titan Towers uh, from the production crew to no longer renting out the buses from. Re 30 million dollars in cuts what is the reason for that like i said a couple of minutes ago you've got to offset the network because you can't go back to pay-per-view you could pay you pay-per-view companies are going to charge you out the ass they're going to say we're yeah. taking we're taking 60 percent 70 percent and we're giving you 40 30 percent so you can't you can't, uh, you can't uh you can't you can't go back to well, uh you just they could and that might still be more financially feasible than the network 60 percent instead of a network with no pay-per-view I don't know the you know particulars, so I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying it could be. But um, the the the, the two things that caught me the most with the number, well, three things. The number itself was like holy shit, uh, and then the other two factors were I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I'll just est I'll guesstimate. They gained since WrestleMania, since the people who signed up for WrestleMania, since then they added like a hundred and hundred and sixty, hundred and ten, hundred and twenty. I thought it was like a hundred and six. Okay, hundred and eighty, hundred and sixty, okay. something like that, but they lost. But they lost. Like a hundred and thirty eight thousand, right. I wanna exactly. say, or something like that. So it was only so they a were, pain. But the, the thing that was impressive was they were able to convince a hundred and sixty, hundred and eighty or saying thousand people right. who either didn't think WrestleMania was worth it, but I guess a freak T shirt or maybe the Warrior Death as tragic as it is, that might have got a lot of old fans to sign up to watch the documentaries, Warrior Week, whatever the fuck. Right, right. Um so it's encouraging to know that they've got ways, because I was always thinking, how are you going to get, other than a couple hundred here, a couple thousand there maybe, with promotional you know, ideas and offers, to sign up in mass, mm -hmm. like tons of people. How are you going to, not tons of people are going to be like, oh my god, I get a free foam finger if right. I sign up? <laughs> yeah. Who gives yeah. a fuck? No, yeah. I don't, you know. So it was encouraging <laughs> to know that they, that the tactics were able to get that many extra people who didn't buy for WrestleMania but would buy for this or that or whatever. Right. That was encouraging. But it wasn't that encouraging because they lost damn near as much as they gained. Yeah. So it, at the end of the day, it was damn near the same number they reported. 23,000 more was what they reported. 13,000 more is what they actually have now because it's down to six right. nine. So it's right. only 13,000 more now, now than, than it was, was at the last months ago, or three right, months at ago. the last quarter, the last quarter yeah. at the last quarter conference call. It's not you only gained they only gained you know like 13, 15,000 yeah, people. Yeah, which is why when we're That's saying it. let's call it 700 it. instead of 690. No, let's not because the 13,000 they gained is damn near what they've already lost now. So they've gained 13,000, but they've lost 10. So, so in the next quarter, out. in the next quarter, how many can they gain? Keep in mind, they're going to lose a lot because the six-month subscriptions are expiring. So they're going to lose a lot. When they come out at the next quarter, they're going to have to report. I bet you at the next quarter in the, uh, what, what is it, the, the, the third quarter earnings, when they come out and report that, I bet you that the WWE Network number is going to be, you know what, it'll be higher. And I think the reason why, in 2015, they were planning to launch the network overseas in 2015, they even said at the initial launch yeah, of the network, next year. we hope that to have it launched by 2015. Yeah, it was early. Now yeah. they are rushing this and saying, "Okay, Canada, it's happening in September. The United Kingdom, it's happening in October." The reason for that is they can't come into the next conference call oh. and they can't say, "Well, we told you 700,000 last quarter. Now 
We're down to 500,000. Okay, very simply put. The shareholders are going to say, what the fuck? Yeah, very you simply put, 000? without the, the rolling out like they're doing, like you said earlier, than expected of the international markets, the next conference call, without the international markets, if you're just looking at domestic, that number's probably going to be less. It's going to go lower. Than 690. But so without the international rollout coming earlier, they would be reporting three months from now a, a smaller number. A smaller number it's than not the number how they much did it go up? Now. Did it go up this right. much or this much or only this much? They it's going to go down. They would report a much smaller number at the third quarter. So the other thing they've got to go out and launch overseas that was one right of the, now. That was one of the moves they made. The other significant, although I don't think it's going to make a big difference move they made, was they offered one month subscriptions at nineteen ninety nine a month. It was right. a fucking joke. But if you're not gonna sign up for nine ninety nine and you have the ability to cancel, which apparently a hundred and eighty thousand sixty whatever it was right, figured right. out that they could do. Right. Why would you sign up for one month at twenty when you can sign up for one at ten and then just cancel? Right. It no, doesn't, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's... And from what I hear, people can still share passwords. They can't. Stuff like they that. That makes a huge difference. People. There's a lot of dumb things. There's a lot of things they can't control. So, and then there's a lot of dumb shit that they're just not right. making a priority when it really is a big priority. They, they went out, and like I was saying, they went out <laughs> and they needed to launch overseas so that they can report a higher number than 700,000. And they will now that they're going to launch in Canada... And and you but they're putting their the, balls in the line again because the investors aren't stupid. Wall Street's not stupid. What's going to happen after that? No, the international. They're going to say, all right, it's a bigger number because. But they're going to know. Well, it's bigger because you rolled out internationally. Yeah. Cause is cause it as big as it is supposed to be that you no. told us when you started this thing? No. Is it that big? No, it's There's not. No way it's going to be that. It's big. not. But WWE counters that and say, okay, you know what? We fucked up on our original projections. We screwed up, but. We I out. forgive you. Here's but my money. No, I'll lose it. no. Say, Fuck you. I'm, Vin- I'm selling my no. stock. Vince comes out and says, "Okay, we screwed up on the original projections. No doubt about it. But we went out and cut thirty million dollars in costs. Yeah. Due to cutting thirty million dollars, well, we are part. still making. We are still making a profit on the network because we cut thirty million dollars in costs. Like I said earlier. But do you think we would have saw thirty million dollars in cuts? Well, what I'm saying not. is, when they roll out internationally. They did those 30 million cuts because the domestic didn't reach the projections they said originally. So, all right, we were wrong at first by saying this many domestic, but we cut $30 million in staff, so it still makes money. When they roll the international out, if it doesn't hit what they promised or their projections were for the domestic and international together, the $30 million only offset the domestic number not being what they said it would be. Once the international number mixed with it's not what they said, they're going to have to cut another $30 million or it's something not, it's, it's to not, be able to tell the investors no, we're still making money. No, because people are saying people are saying that right now, with everybody combined, if they can hit around 1 million subscribers, everybody combined, that's overseas, that's domestic, 1 million yeah. is the number that if they can hit, they will be turning a profit. And as long as the network turns a profit... I don't know if that's one, true. I'll agree at, with you, at, but I don't know. Around one million. Somewhere around one million. As long as the network is turning a profit, and the reason why it would turn a profit is because of the $30 million in cuts that they recently did. If they can hit that one million and they can stay there and the network is turning a profit, then the shareholders are going to say, okay, well, even though your original numbers were off, you did go out and cut thirty million dollars in cost, and we still are making a profit. We can respect that, and the fact that the network is making that profit is going to make them happy. I can't argue that because I don't know the numbers. Right, but that doesn't sound right to me. I'm telling it you, when that, when that international number comes out, if it's not anywhere near what they projected, they're going to have to cut another large chunk of staff to still make it profitable. Million dollars is a lot yeah. of cuts, bro. That's a lot of that's a lot of money, bro. Yeah. Thirty million dollars. All in right, cuts. we'll take that and. Multiple er, and subtract the fact that they said they're going to have a million domestic. They only had six ninety. That's about three quarters of the way there. So if you add three hundred thousand times nine ninety nine a month, what does that come out to? Several million dollars, right? Several million. So the thirty million offsets that several million. Now when the international rolls out and it's nowhere near those projections, right? That thirty million dollars they just they just offset this part of not making what they promised. Is covered, but will that part be covered when the international? I think if, if you're going to look at it that way, I think well, that's you know, all the investors will look th- at. Thirty million dollars. I think you know they probably only needed to cut 
I don't know, twenty million in cost. I think there's still going to be a ten million dollar. So now we're just guessing, though. I, we're just guessing. That's and my this point. Is I, can't, I can't strongly argue. But I just guess. I think there would still be, you know, the fact that they cut thirty million in cost, and they probably, my guess is they only needed to cut twenty million in cost. That way, they can come back and say, well, wait a minute, that's now we're ten million dollars. Over and we're looking better going into this, even though what we but told you the point, network was going to be, we're still ten million dollars. But at that point, you're only breaking even, not making money. True. That's going to look like shit. Right. Then it's going to be, well, how are you? You don't have any more countries to roll out in now. Right. So it's just going to start going down unless you can get. How are you going to get it up? Original content. You've got to put tough that enough. That costs in, money. Then they're going to start costs. losing money again because they're spending more to make. You're right. To try and up the number, right. and if right. they don't up the number, then spending more to give that original content is going to end up making them lose money on the thing as a whole. It's very complicated, but right now, it's okay because of the cuts that they've made and stuff. They're still, financially, at the end of the day, it's all right. It's okay now. Will it be when an international rolls out, and depending on that number, depending on how much, how many more people can you fire, you still need a certain amount of goddamn employees. Right. To cover merchandise and international well, television and house shows and, only, and fucking digital and online stuff and right. network. There's all these different departments. Well, they shut down the WWE magazine. They, yeah, they shut that, right? The kids and the main magazine. The whole magazine yeah. department the in general. The entire. There were four, 14 employees for the magazine department. Is that Oof, it? Gone. That was it for, for magazines. Magazine? Yeah. Um, but they're all gone. Uh, <laughs> department heads at Titan Towers, basically the guys like Joey Styles. Department head of WWE.com. Yeah. I don't know if they laid off WWE.com employees. I'm sure there was probably a few of them. But all the department heads were told to go select people in their department who we could cut, who we could give notices to, and uh, they submitted the list, and those people were out. They probably did like Go GE on. did. GE would always cut every year at the end of the year, and they didn't have any reason to do it. It's just they're a strong business. Right. They would cut the bottom 10% of the company at the end of every year. Yeah. If you're yeah. in the bottom 10%, you're, you're out. You're gone. gone. Fuck you. Know it. We don't need you. We only want the brightest yeah. and the best. Listen, it's a complicated thing like we, like, like we just talked about here with, you know, there's a lot of moving parts, you know, that you can't, you can't say for sure this or that because it depends Right. On this or that, and we don't know what this or that is until fact, this or that. It's fact, like so. Con yeah. Fact of the matter is, is, the numbers that they originally projected were way lower than anticipated. They went out, made thirty million dollars in cuts, this, that, and the other thing. So, and not only that, but I see people. You know, why? Why do you want? Why? Why do you always shit all over the network? Why do you say such bad things about the network? Listen. I want the network to succeed. This is the future, man. WWE went out on a limb here. Nobody else had done this. Uh, WWE went Not out on a limb. Extent. Not to this extent. Went out on a limb here. It took a risk. And granted, the numbers aren't what they thought they were going to be. So I'm just trying to tell you guys on Facebook and Twitter that this, these numbers, they're not good. But the fact that they went out and cut $30 million... They're doing That's what a good thing. Doing, yeah. They're doing what needs to be done to make the network succeed by cutting costs in other areas. They're holding themselves so accountable they, to their investors so that when they right. go in front of them, they can say, listen, yeah, it didn't do it, but we just fucking saved $30 million doing this. Right. So it's still good. We're still, You're still going to make money. We're still all right. It's still, you know, this and that. But then when the next guy... <laughs> It's like it, these conference calls become more and more fucking crucial each time because they have all these promises, I mean, which they've always had, but now the stakes are so high because of this goddamn network and the and the and the pretty much slashing of pay-per-view. Which that was the other thing that surprised me from the conference call. Right. The pay-per-view numbers were they dropped a lot, right? Obviously, they lost. They were still pretty they were good. Still pretty goddamn good considering for, for the amount of paying fifty dollars. A that they're spending fifty instead of ten, and B that they only had these channels of distribution because this one cut them and you know in demand whatever the fuck the people that stopped running their pay per views. Right. So they only had these different channels of distribution for pay per view as opposed to all of them, and they and and like you said, fifty dollars instead of ten. That's a you have to be retarded. To say no, I'll spend fifty on backlash instead of ten on the next six fucking months, you know, of pay per views. Right. But the numbers are still, to me, pretty damn good considering the circumstances. The situation that you guys are talking about in the uh, in the chat room right now, I'm not going to get into it, but it's being addressed. Up? It's uh, let me let me do this. It's being addressed, and uh, and it'll be taken care of. Uh, I have spoken to him. 
and uh, we're gonna get it taken care oh. of. So we'll uh, we'll go from there. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna get it taken care of. I spoke to him over the weekend and again <laughs> last night, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get back on track here. So get the, speaking of the chat room, yes. WZROnline.com/slash/chat/wzronline.com/slash/chat. Dot 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 get in there. Lots and lots of people in there tonight. As always, we're gonna be here uh, for the next. Smackdown's being taped in Laredo, Texas. Laredo, yeah. Laredo. I think it's Laredo. Laredo, Laredo uh, Texas. So uh, we are. There's gonna be a one-hour delay. They're an hour behind us. So if you guys are on the uh, on the West Coast or on the East Coast tonight, uh, Smackdown spoilers normally come out about 10:30, 10:45. It's gonna be like 11:30, 11:45 tonight because of that one-hour delay. But we're still gonna have uh, WWE Smackdown spoilers and uh, for you guys. A whole fucking shitload of Impact spoilers tonight, too. Impact as well. They're taping uh, Hardcore Justice is the uh, the first television Right taping. down the road. There are some sick matches I mean, way down the road, right? on right down the road. that show. <laughs> Bro, uh, the Hardys. Samoa Joe against Loki. The I Hardys, say that. Yeah, the Hardys. Okay. okay, the what? Hardys, Team 3D and the Wolves. Yes. Samoa Joe, Loki, Angelina Think Love. Think about that. The Velvet Hardys. Velvet Sky, Gail Kim, and Taryn Terrell in a four-way. The Hardys, Team 3D. The Hardys, they're the trying to redo Team 3D Hardys Edge and Christian, but with Bruh. the Wolves playing the with role the of Edge Wolves, and I like it. I, I do too. love it, dude. I think it's that, smart. Dude, that is a sick I've heard a lot of criticism, like, oh, you're trying to be ECW again, or you're trying to be the Attitude Era of WWE again. You, whatever they're doing is, I can't say working because they're about to go out of business, but that has nothing to do with what they're doing now. This this is stuff that, you know, it's so good, it's so involved. You didn't see the we Hardys. You, you, want, but you didn't see the Hardys. Team those three. network. Uh, uh, network New York tapings have been the most praised, awesome, complimented, etc., yeah. etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Impact. I don't remember. I don't ever hear about Impact unless something significant happens, something significantly bad, right. significantly good, and it's always significantly bad. The the New York loop they just did was the only time in a long time I can recall, other than their European tour, jet, whatever the fuck overseas tour they recently did. Right. They were successful there. They were, uh, but United yeah, Kingdom. They yeah, were in the, the, the European tour, whatever right. the fuck it was. Yeah, but I, you know, I heard good things there because they're actually filling houses for a change, selling tickets. But the New York tapings are the first time in a long time I can recall people saying, "Damn, Impact was awesome this week." Yeah, it was good. You usually, you hear, "Oh, good, I'm never man. watching again." It was so fucking bad. It sucks shit. Right. It's the drizzling, sh- you know, whatever. It was I good. heard New York was awesome. It, they were awesome tapings. Not good only crowd, that, but, um, good content. The uh, the Hardy Boys and the uh, Dudley Boys from last or Team 3D mm-hmm. uh, from last week's Impact. They actually opened Impact last week with that match. I thought they were going to main event with it, and that's what main evented the television tapings. But with the post, how's the ratings been? For post the editing. Shows? You know what? They haven't gone up. They had the uh, the first week in New York City. The win. I think they went to a 1.1, and then this past week they were back down to a 1.0. I think. You know, viewership, viewership is up, but the rating is still a 1.1, 1.0. You know how that works. Yeah, it depends on a lot of different things, right. too. Uh, the yeah, demographics and everything else. I would, right. And the competition and, and what, how many households are on, you know, watching. Right, right, That's what the, right. uh, what was it, the share. How, you know, there's how a rating and there's able? a share uh, of viewers. So if the share is down, the rating's going to be down because there's less people watching TV. I was wondering, if they say an average, I'm sorry, if they say an average of 4 million... 120,000 people, how do they know that six people in one household aren't watching Raw? They <laughs> no, they don't. No, they so, don't. it could, when they say an That's average. That's they say households, not viewers. Okay, households. Yeah. Okay. 4.2 million households watch this show. No, yeah. they say 4,120,000 viewers. Yeah, the well, household rating, but the viewership. That's why they say it that way. They give yeah. a number. All right. Well, because they can only count the TVs. That's viewership. That's, you know, but. Right. You can't. Right. Nobody can know how many people are right. watching. It's just like a radio. Right. They say every radio hits two people. Or, or a minimum, or an average of two people. That's yeah, how it's two people driving in a car. car. Yeah, Stern would always say that statistics show radio hits two people. So if you have a 19 share. Of the audience, you know, you really have right, right. But know. there are vans driving around that have five people in the van. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't know. There's no such thing as less than one, so it's no matter what, it's more than it's what they say. At least one or more. Right? Yeah, right, right, right. and especially with pay per views, when they say you know this show did a million buys, well, it's like, but really, like three, four million people saw it because nobody right because pay per views is when you get friends over, invite and people, you watch it together. The UFC is a great example. Big boxing right. show, great example. Exactly. WrestleMania. That's exactly. when you throw parties. I know ECW exactly. back in the day. Every ECW pay per view for me and my friends was a part. Everybody would come over. It Same was, thing WrestleMania back in the it day. It was for us. more than WrestleMania. Yeah, like yeah. for ECW pay per views in their prime, 
Right. You, we had more people there than for... I mean, there was no UFC at the time, on pay-per-view anyway. That was the Dark Ages that right. I'm referring to, the mid-90s, late-90s. But, uh, yeah, so... All right, so, listen, <clears throat> you just brought up... We got 15 minutes before we go to the break, less than that. Right. So, how about this? We Listen, my father is coming in. Uh, he's going to be flying in from Colorado on August 19th. My birthday's coming up. When is it? August 16th. So he's coming here. He's coming after your birthday. After my birthday. <laughs> right. Well, he we could book the plane ticket. Anyway, fucking my mom. <laughs> my mom. You know what? My mother. The last time she was here left one day before my birthday. She Did left she? on August fifteenth. Well, not the last time she was here because I was here the last time she was here. That was for Christmas. Okay, it was the time before that. Right, then she right. left one day before my birthday. She left on August fifteenth, and my birthday was on the sixteenth. How about that? But anyway, um, so my father is is coming in. We don't have Wi Fi tonight. Is is where I'm going with this. That can't and, be true uh, either. I was here for your birthday last year, and your mom wasn't here. You talking about a year you ago? You were not here in August no, of last year. No, you weren't. No, it was. You haven't been here a year, bro. <laughs> August. No. August. No, you didn't show up until the fall. August. You didn't get here in the summer last year. August. I've been here since August. You didn't get here in August. My last check. You serious? My last check for a site that shall not be named was August. Okay. And I had that when I was here because I was lending you money when I first moved in. You got here in August. It's been a year. Happy one year anniversary, brother. <laughs> okay. Son of a bitch, yeah. man. But I'm just saying, right. so you must be thinking of a year before because this, your mom yeah, wasn't here in August. Or maybe she was. Maybe she was before. No you idea. got here in late August. No, it was you at the end of August. You weren't here for my no, birthday. No, no, I was here for your birthday. No, you I weren't. remember feeling bad that I couldn't, I couldn't get you nothing. We didn't do shit. No, that was Christmas where I bought you the speaker and you couldn't get me anything. You you said, no, you didn't take me out to get you any, but yet you brought me a speaker for my computer. That was yeah, the gift thing. Yeah, no, I, I remember your birthday. Though. You weren't here for my birthday last year. Maybe I wasn't. I know I've been no, here no, since no. August because that's the month that I got, I, I got fired in July and my last check was going to be August. So I know that. And I, I had my last check here because that's why I moved here. Cause after well, wait that, a minute. At all? my last check, I wouldn't be able to afford to live where I was living before. Before. Well, let me Which say this. A little shit hotel. You got, you got fired this, that, and the other thing, but it all comes full circle, and we won't talk about that right now, but it all comes uh, full circle, right? I don't know what you're talking about. You got fired, and now... Oh, we're thinking of a different site. Oh, okay. Okay, no doubt. Oh, oh you know what? No, we're not thinking of a different site. Okay, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, no that doubt. That was my last BE check, yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now it all comes from so yes. Look at you. Anyways, um, all right, so here we go. Uh, where I'm going with this is we cannot take rapid fire tonight. Uh, once again, we don't have Wi-Fi. So my father is coming on August 19th, and he knows how to set up the oh, the chat's on my beard. I just gotta let people know. I'm not trying to grow a beard or a goatee. I got a little. I'm being lazy, things. and it's quick to just go rip, 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 yeah. rip, 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 <laughs> and skip this part. This is where you gotta be careful around the right, 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 right. Careful around the chance. Fuck it. Leave. I didn't get a chance to uh, to shave today, but anyways. Uh, so my father is coming on August 19th, and he knows how to set up a Wi-Fi network connection. So what he's gonna do is on the laptop or in this house at somewhere is going to set up a Wi-Fi connection. He's so we go with computers. He's he helped me with, with mine over right. the phone once when I was in Florida. He's helped me with mine numerous yeah. times. So uh, he's going to set up a, a thing where every week it's kind of hit or miss here where this laptop, right now this laptop is doesn't work. It's pretty much here for look yeah. for, for you guys on it the yacht. Uh, literally is here for look. Like it's you used to have look. a big bar that said here right. that did nothing. Right, right, right. And I would always ask you, why? You said it looks cool. I said it looks like a big fucking bar. I can, just I can look at the time here to know how much time we got left. Right. But So the laptop basically sits you here. But he's going to... does that too, though. Yeah, I don't have it in here. Usually, though. yeah. Um, so he's going to set us up a, uh, a Wi-Fi connection right here on uh, on this computer. So every week we have Wi-Fi, we won't have to depend on somebody else's, this, that, and the other thing. So yeah, tonight we can't do rapid fire. Yeah, we so, can. Well, we'll do it. All right. Well, I was going to do raw in hour number two. Hey, well, uh, we, we, we got to go long anyway. we got to cover that Jones uh, Cormier. That's if we well, I was going to give you 10 to 15 right. minutes right now, so I don't think we can do rapid fire tonight. Um... But we will take your live questions out of the uh, chat room and your live phone calls as well. And then in our numero dos, we are going to be taking, like I said, live phone calls, uh, your questions out of the chat room. So get in the chat room, and we're going to be running down Monday Night Raw from last night. Uh, we're kind of taking a different approach in recent weeks where 
you know, the whole first hour we talk the news and rumors, and then an hour and rumor of those, we talk about last it night's It just Monday turned out that way, because last week the big TNA The network and everything, but I'm trying, to, network, I'm trying to switch it up, because everybody's I think it's wrong. better this way, yeah. I do too, where we get into we a big discussion. We spend way too much time on Raw. On Raw, every week, We have right? two hours a week, and so much, yes. I, I can't count how many times where I'm like, God yes. damn, we gotta wait four more days to talk about that? Right. Like, with the network number. That's been, goddamn fucking almost a week, and I'm like, man, we still haven't talked about it. Right. That's going right. to be the whole show, and so much has happened since the number, we can't even really start on it. So, in our numero dos, like I said, we're going to run down Monday Night Raw, take your live phone calls, and if you got a, if you got a question, instead of doing the rapid fire tonight on, on our Facebook page, or on my Facebook page, just go to the chat room, and uh, we'll scroll down, and uh, we'll give you guys, we'll take your live questions out of the, uh, the chat room. We got seven minutes. Seven. Yesterday. Monday. Monday. UFC media scrum. Media day. Media day. Yeah. Uh, where they are hyping an event coming up in a couple of weeks. I believe. September 27th. Daniel Cormier. John Jones. Yes. On stage. Yes. Let them well, they they know what happened. They had, it's not really a press conference, but it is. Uh, you know, basically it's it's to hype. The, the tickets went on sale yesterday. So they, they get the fighters there make a spectacle out of it to really get people in the media and everything covering it so that everybody's aware that the tickets are on sale and it usually sells out really quick. MGM Grand, Las Vegas yesterday. Yeah, where we've been. Yes, sir. But, uh, yeah, so they had the media day. They do the stare-downs for photo ops so that all the media can have a picture to go with their story, this and that. And they always go nose to nose for the uh, pictures, especially heated rivalries, which Jones Cormier was obviously going to be. Everybody knew that right. long before they actually made the match. Right. Uh, they go to go nose to nose. Jones usually does some weird thing where, say, this beer can is his opponent's face. He won't go like this. He'll turn his head to the side, look the other way, and just put his like cheek in his face. Right. And he won't ever make eye contact. And I remember. I think it was Rampage was the first, it was either Rampage or Rashad, was the first guy to, that addressed it in a media press conference and was like, you going to look in my eyes, boy? When we, you know. So he went to do the thing that he always does, and he walked up and he started doing that, and then he said like this, he said, yeah. And then like <laughs> fucking like, you want me to look in your eyes, there you go. Well, All right. with Daniel Cormier, there was no cheek, there was no, I need to have somebody punk me into doing it. He got right up, and started fucking... Pushing his face in the Cormier's face. And Cormier, not only did he not, everybody says he pushed him. He did not push him. He did not even pie face him. He, he, he grabbed, grabbed him by the throat he and grabbed said, him and pushed like him back. That. Right. And the motherfucker, John Jones, was pissed. Right. He didn't say, oh, I'm going to push him back. He started fucking throwing punches. I mean, he's no, swinging no, no, no. on, dude. Yeah, John yeah, Jones yeah. went, okay, he grabbed him by the neck, he pushed him back, and then he charged at him and threw a, a right or, uh, okay, yeah. a, le and I a left hand, hand at him. So that was weird. All right, yeah, so he, left hand. he threw a left at him, people jumped in immediately, and the left hand, it, it, it missed, it completely no, yeah, missed, yeah, yeah. okay? Then, the set, the background set where they put all the stuff up, that toppled over. That yeah. fell down. Well, Cormier got knocked down, and he, you know, they went through the then set. Then it looked like Cormier took him and had him down like that in like a, a headlock or a, a, a fucking hold. He had him down on the ground. Jones gets out of it and starts pounding down these punches trying, on yeah. Cormier as people are trying to get involved, trying to split yeah. him up. Um, and there's a lot of rumors that, that Mike Kogan, uh, no, uh, Malky Kawa, Malky something. The trainer the, uh, of that's manager, what you were you were telling. The about. manager of Cormier, yeah. A lot of people thought he was throwing punches too. Like while they're like like kinda like if anybody saw the, the Chelsea Sun and Vanley Silva Brawl on the Ultimate Fighter Brazil. Right. That Andre Dida dickhead came in while Sun was on top of uh, Silva and started fucking Couple popping Sun shots from right, behind. Right, right. Yeah. Somebody right. A lot of people accuse the Malky of doing that to uh, uh, Jones, and I think he represents. Let me say this, and Boone will address this. Be Dizzle in the chat room. If you, oh dude, God, I'm a lot of telling are, you, not a lot of people, but anytime something like that happens, there's a certain Somebody segment of said people. That. There's a certain segment of people, and it's not just one or two. There's always a goddamn large legion of people that thinks you have seen something fixed now happens, like pro wrestling. Ooh. Yeah, anytime something like that happens, it's fake. It was staged to sell hype, this and that. If you watched that video you can yesterday, watch it and tell it. If you watched that yeah. video yesterday, and you 
Honest. And if you watch all the interviews honestly, they did after it, my if God. If you honestly believe that that was scripted or set up or fake yesterday, there's something wrong with you. You can ju you can watch that video and say, "Holy fuck, man!" Well, look, that was the real. I mean, and, that, on, and, and, and with that happening, up, there's lawsuits that could come out of that from the fans right. that could have been injured during it. Right. The media. Uh, uh, the fight could have been canceled. Yeah. You know, the yeah. commission could have said, "Fuck this bullshit." Dana like, wasn't when, happy about it. Uh, bit Lewis on the leg when they had their skirmish. Similar thing, face to face. Tyson got too close. Mm, they started throwing. Matt Hughes. Tyson bites his leg. Matt Hughes is. A Matt Hughes came out and uh, ripped it on yeah, Twitter and said, you're, you're making our yeah. sport look bad, this, Hughes, that, and the other thing. shut up. All right. But anyways, uh, that's the only tweet that I saw that he continued yeah, no, on it was there. a big story. All right. Hughes All right. You're right. Well, anyways, but, uh, so a lot of people came out and said, listen, it's bad for the sport. Then, you just brought up, they then went to, I know they were on a Fox Sports show and they were on ESPN as yeah. well. And Fox during Sports the interview, Live, what, happened, what happened during it those? Really, I mean, it was just a lot of... Uh, you know, jawing back and forth and stuff. But didn't you say, you told me yesterday that John Jones was kind of quiet uh, originally and Cormier was kind of calling him out saying, come on, dude, what, what the fuck, dude, you ain't, you know, didn't, John Jones was trying to act, he was trying to play, he was, play it cool. Yeah, he was doing his, oh, I apologize for being unprofessional and he was trying to stay in his character, which everybody knows right. is phony, it's which so is fake. why everybody That's something him. that's fake, is that's John why Jones' his character. His personality, yeah. Right. Because he'll post these things on Instagram, which he did right after the brawl. He was like, dude, you're an Olympic wrestler, I put you on your back I in saw six it. seconds. I saw it, yeah, yeah. punches, you hit like yeah. a girl, you yeah. better have better take down the fans. Right. And he's right. laughing, and this was right after it happened. Right, right, and He's right. like facing his camera on his phone and on Instagram. He deletes it. You know, he Did he? he? Did he delete it? He, cause he, he'll do it in the heat of the moment. He does it in the heat. Exactly. He'll react without right. thinking, put it straight online where millions of people see it, and then he'll delete it like it never happened. Like well, let's, let's, maybe tie, let's, saw it let's yet. We'll tie that into pro wrestling real quick before we go to the break. Randy Orton just did that. He went out and Miss called Piggy. a girl yeah. uh, a Latino Miss Piggy is, is what he went and called her, and then went back and deleted the tweets yeah. and said, you know, I apologize. The, the correct way to respond to bullies are... To not fight back, to the the way to always told you stand up to them. The, the 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 way to respond to bullies is not to bully back. You don't bully the bully back. No, that's right. what you're trying to get. You be the better man and you step up and you you walk away or this that and the other thing. But uh, anyways, TMZ yeah. picked that up yesterday. This that and the other thing. So Jones Cormier, I gotta say. When stuff like that happens, that's a million by I'm fight. excited, man. Yeah. I'm excited that's for that. That's a million fight by now. fight now. That fight will do a million buys on the paper. It's still a couple weeks away, right? It's a month away. Yeah, month yeah, away, over yeah. a month. Away. It's September 27th, so it's right. just under two months away. So what happens at the weigh-ins? Well, they were doing another. They were on the same stage as we were setting up for the show. I was watching it when you came in here originally. Oh, today? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they did a Q and A thing. A live Q and A started at seven Eastern time in Vegas. And Is Dana there stage. today? No, no Dana. It was no. this chick, Megan Olivia or something. Olivia. Or something. Dana's on vacation. That's right. She's so fucking hot too. This Megan yeah. Olivia. She reminds me of that girl Lee. You remember Lee? Yeah. Oh. Looked just like her. But um, yeah. So they're on the same stage now. They're laughing and making fun of each other. But they still. The one will say something, the other doesn't. It happens every interview they've done. Right. They'll try and be like, oh, DC, you ain't nothing. And Jones, oh, Bones, shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then yeah. one guy will say one thing that the other one's like, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then yeah. they get into it. Right. And, and, and right. every interview they've done, Fox Sports Live, which yeah. you mentioned, ESPN. Sports Center, which you mentioned, yeah. today at the Q&A, yeah. they just can't help it. They don't like each other. They don't like They each can other. hide it as much as they try and try and we're professionals and... We're martial artists that respect each other. At the right. end of the day, they don't fucking like each other. All right. And they're going right. to get locked in a cage and beat the fuck out of each other. Right, right. In just about two months, and a million people are going to watch it on paper. All right, listen. And they're not spending nine ninety nine. No, Listen, no, no, no. I'll say it right now. Yeah. $20. $20. 20 bucks. Cormier. No. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I'm betting Cormier. Yeah? My boss asked me are yesterday. You? He said, who are you taking? I said, Cormier, you know what? Cormier, I think I'm taking DC. Cormier's a bigger dude. He gets him on the ground. I think he. I think he pounds. They're him both out. undefeated, technically. Jones has one loss on his record, but he was. He was. He was against Matt Hamill, the deaf guy, in the UFC. He was beating the living shit out of him one time. Every fight. time you say Matt Hamill, you act like I don't know him. But it's the deaf guy from I know Utica. you know him. I'm here in Utica. I know. But the, the, all right, the, you're right. I got know. you. Yeah, they right. might know. Oh, there was that deaf guy on the Ultimate Fighter right. once. Anyways, anyways, that's the only guy he's lost to, and he didn't lose anything. He didn't even get touched by Hamill the whole fight. He beat the living shit out of him, but he started throwing elbows six to. Uh, they call it twelve six elbows. Okay, like twelve and six on the clock, straight up and right. down. They're right. supposed to come at an angle. 
Uh-huh. If you go straight up and down with them, that's illegal. Cause, like, you can't it's supposed make, to come at an angle. Th- it's supposed to come at 3 6. No, 3 Any, 9. Anything, three anything, nine. anything oh, other than player. 12 and 6. <laughs> oh, it can no. be 1 12 and 8. And six, it can 3 be, and 9. It three can be and 2 nine. and 4 30. You know, <laughs> anything other than 12 <laughs> and 6. But he got disqualified for that. So that's his one loss. He's never lost. All right. Cormier's never lost either. Right. But like you said, Cormier's bigger. Yeah. He gives Kane Velasquez. Stocky. He gives Kane Velasquez. Velasquez fit. They're training partners, DC and Velasquez. Right. And he gives Velasquez a hard time. Does he? Yeah. And Velasquez is the heavyweight champion. Right. So he's a bigger guy. He's a better wrestler. He's got Olympic level credentials. Although that was brought up today. Jones quit college because he knocked up his girlfriend and he quit to get a job and support his family. Okay. So he never got the chance to see if he could be an NCAA champion, champion you right, know, national right. champion, or the Olympic level. He never got a chance to do that because he dropped out of college to support his family and make money instead of you know pursuing his dreams. Right. So maybe he would have been two, but we don't know. We do know Cormier was a two-time Olympian, national champion. I think he placed second, but whatever. He's a bad mother. He was a coach right. of the U.S. Olympic wrestling team. Right. So I mean, he's as good as it gets wrestling-wise. He's right. never been beaten. He's got great striking. He was tearing up. I mean, he has teared up, torn up Josh Barnett, Frank Mir. You go, I mean, these are top heavyweights. Right. Not light right. heavyweights like John yeah, Jones. I so, know. in my mind, I don't know, man. That's a tough fight to call. It's a. It's going to be an awesome fight. It's going to be and a the hype, the hype surrounding it. You know the styles. The styles, won't, the the styles won't be boring. So the fight itself will be exciting. The I don't know the unpredictability of not knowing who's going to win. Right. Makes it that much more exciting. It's the gonna hype good, that's going to go into it makes it. It's just. All it's exciting all awesome. the way around. Listen, we're going to come back on the flip side. There's some more UFC news that I want to get Boone to talk about because it's been a, uh, a very busy week in the, uh, yes, in the MMA has. world. So we're going to uh, touch base on Monday Night Raw from last night. Do the high points, the low points, things like that. Adam Rose, that was a weird segment last night. They were that movie. We'll give you, uh, yeah. give you the reason why uh, the WWE films. So talk about that. And uh, Brie Bella, Stephanie McMahon, second week in a row, main evented. I was a fan last week. I wasn't a fan this week. Brie Bella, Brie Bella, not so good on the microphone. But we'll talk about it when we come back from the commercial break. See how Matty B feels about it. See how I feel about it. You're listening to WZR TV Tuesdays with Matty B and Ryan C. We'll be back right after this. We're all indoors here on WZR TV. It's not polite to eat food to to talk with. uh, <laughs> Must send my work one. Oh, yeah. Just like walking without the key. And we're back. We're back. It's not polite to talk with food in your mouth, but anyways, I'm gonna do it anyway. Get to our live chat room, wzronline.com/slash/chat.com. Wzronline.com. Motherfucking dot com slash chat. Oh. Get in there. Lots and lots of people in there, as always, tonight. You I sent it. You did not send it. I didn't? I don't have it. Well, let me go get it. Go get it. Because it's funny. It is funny. He's got a clip he wants to show everybody. Uh, but until he gets that clip, make sure to join us in the chat room, like he said, at wzronline.com slash chat. We'll also be taking your live phone calls as I get everything set up. Hold on. I might have it now. I got it, dude. Got it? Yeah. Uh, at 518-712-3070 uh, after we get through with Raw. But uh, I don't know when you want me to play this. So listen, I'll get it was I right and you were wrong right there? You had it, right? I had to log back out and back in. Um, you watched me log in. It wasn't there. Okay. Anyways, I want to play this clip courtesy of Ryan Shoptaw. Uh, Shoptaw Man, yeah. I believe, in the, uh, in the chat room. Check this out. If you haven't seen this yet, I want you guys to count the amount of times... They say WWE Network. Ooh, that's fun. Let's see if the chat gets it. Last we night on Raw. We know the number, and yeah. I'm sure some people have seen this video, but we know the number. So we want you guys, if you've already seen it in the chat, hold off. Don't spoil it Don't for spoil everybody it. else. Yeah. But let's go. How many times did they say WWE Network last night on Raw? This is from last night. Go! SummerSlam at Staples Center in Los Angeles and live on the WWE Network. 
WWE Network, 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 the Network, WWE 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 Network, the Network, WWE 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 so far, Seven times. we got a guest from John Morgan of 36. 36. Some people in the, uh, one person in the chat room, John Morgan, you said. All right, 36. Did anybody Very count? close. Anybody count in the, uh, in the live chat room? Let us know how many WWE networks Let's you delay counted go, and then we'll last night think. on uh, Monday Night Raw. Big shout out to, uh, Winner's Lair. He's going to be a new, uh, moderator in the, uh, in the chat room. So Reigns, there knows, we go. He knows, he knows. <coughs> well, it's over now, but. Yeah. Reigns, uh, Reigns got it. So last night during Raw, uh, they said WWE Network 41 times throughout a three-hour show. So you're talking three hours. You've got 20. No, you've got about 15, about 13 times per hour. Yeah. They said WWE Network 13 times per hour, and you got to you got to figure with commercial breaks and things like that, they're only on for what? 40 minutes. I know a half, an hour, and a half an hour show with commercials, and I don't know if it's the same for sitcoms as it is for live sporting events or sports entertainment events, but it's 22 minutes is what okay. you get for a TV show that's 30 minutes. Okay. So that's 44 minutes for an hour. 44 minutes. So every... 13, every, 13 every, times 13 in 44 times. minutes. 13 times in 44 minutes. That's about every three minutes. Yeah. They were plugging the <laughs> network. <laughs> Pretty much every three minutes. And it's you not like, say, WWE Network. Most of those network. weren't commentary either. A lot of those were like in the meat of a segment <laughs> right, or a dude. promo. <laughs> Gotta order the WWE yeah. Network. Check it out. Like, blah, yo, blah, 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 blah. when I kick your ass at SummerSlam this Sunday <laughs> on the WWE, on the WWE <laughs> Network, which is available for $9.99 a month or $19.99 a month if you don't want to do a six-month commitment. Don't let me get off track. I'll open your ass. <laughs> right, dude. Yeah. It was all about the network last night. And then not only that, but... Do we have a Raw report or we don't yes, have one up yes, yet? Yes. All right, let's get a Raw report up because there was another segment where it was Rusev against some jobber. I can't, Sin Cara, maybe? Yes. Rusev and, uh, and Sin Cara. <laughs> they come back from the commercial break, and we, we had go. already heard. We had already. You got You got to order the net, the WWE Network, right? They come back from the break, and they say, "Oh, by the way, that's that's fine." Uh, they come back from the break, and uh, all of a sudden they say, "Oh." The match already happened during the commercial yeah. break. And by the way, what you got to download the WWE app to find out what happened. Or they showed a replay, but that's part of the reason that you, you need to have the WWE app. Because things like this can happen in commercial breaks where full matches can take place during the commercial break. So, in addition to paying nine ninety nine for the WWE Network, yeah, they want you, to you do gotta get that things. WWE yeah. app too. You need to sign up for this and download that and install this and go register for that and, and, and be here on this date and there. That the, the, the not too long ago they had Cesaro lose uh, Kofi Kingston during a commercial break. During a commercial, plug yeah, the well, WWE app. When we came back he was whooping Kingston's ass, but the finish was during a commercial. So you gotta download the WWE app to and find out what happened. They plugged so. that app like whores then too. Yeah. That's why I'm saying last you night's wrong. Um, yeah, go ahead. Call, and then we're going to run down uh, Monday Night Raw from last night. We'll do the high points and the low points. Caller, you are live on WZR TV. What's going on? Hey, guys. Jacqueline. Hey. How you doing? Um, I'm doing okay. Um, we, we were just talking um, about Rusev right before you called. We're talking about Rusev and, uh, and Lana. Yeah, um... I, I'm I'm starting to see that there's more there's going to be some more romance going on between us two because I've been noticing that he's in you know after last night Swagger was I think Swagger was going to attack her last night and Rusev jumped in immediately and said hey don't come near my woman 
You and, know, uh, hey, hey, Jackie, Jackie, do you know that Rusev and uh, and Lana are dating in real life? Did you know that? Of course, of course, of I course do. Ryan. I, I, oh, I, I, I've known that for months now. Duh, duh, stupid me. Jeez. <laughs> oh, well, what was her question or point? What was she making? She was saying that uh, they're going to get r more romantic. That's why I had said oh, on, oh, okay. they're gonna on, get on the screen. On the storyline. Right, right, okay, okay. So. Yeah. All right, um, so what else? What else uh, yeah, happened um, on Raw last night? Uh, nothing, much, no, nothing much really going on. My my grandma's sister passed away today, and she's kind of uh, taking it hard, so I'm just trying to I'm staying strong for her, but I'm just worried about her. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, sorry to hear that, Jackie. Thank you, that. Thank you guys. I'll let her know. Um, it's it's just been a hard day. I found my mom found out from her cousin, and I found out when my mom got home from work. And I'm like, oh man. And I'm like, then my mom told me to wait outside because I was helping carry some stuff into the house, and that's when she told my grandma. And I'm like, oh man. And I'm just. I'm well, sorry to hear that. I'm just. Thank you guys very much. Um, well, what I. Ha I haven't I haven't heard what Triple H's role is going to be for um for SummerSlam because I've been upstairs most of the night with my grandma. So what's going on with Triple H's role for SummerSlam? They're uh, talking about it's not confirmed, but they're talking about adding him uh, to the Stephanie McMahon Brie Bella match as a special guest referee at SummerSlam, and uh, they're also talking about turning Nikki uh on Brie and uh having her kind of join the authority and help them screw with Brie Bella. They've been talking about turning Nikki yeah. uh heel for quite some time. They don't now. know when they're uh, doing it yet, but sometime during this program, which is expected to at least last to SummerSlam, possibly after. Yeah. Uh yeah. at some point she's turning and that probably what they'll do is after SummerSlam, because Stephanie's not wrestling twice in a row, you wouldn't think. I don't think they so. They go from Stephanie to Nikki because Nikki turned Probably Nikki screws Brie at, at SummerSlam, right. which leads into Nikki versus Brie. Nikki versus Brie at Night of, Night Champions. of Champions. Right, yeah. and then continue the uh, the storyline that way. Yeah, because Stephanie's still involved, just not wrestling. Right, right. We'll have to wait and see about uh, about Triple H as well. I mean, it's only rumored right now that he may be the special guest referee. It, it kind of makes sense yeah. after the uh, the angle they did last night on Raw. He so. got involved. Yeah. Right, right. I, I'm, I'm, totally, I'm totally down with that. I'm a Triple H and Stephanie fan. I'm totally down with that. I have... Well, nothing really against the Bellows, but after last night, they kind of did tick me off. And I'm like, excuse me, you don't slap the CEO. That's your boss. He signs your paycheck at the end of each week. So you don't put your hands on him. You now, tell him. Um, you tell him. What's going on for, well, what's going on for Hogan's birthday next week? Is Sting going to be there or what? Because I, I heard that Sting was at Comic-Con because I saw the video, and I'm like, holy shit, is he coming to the company or what now? We know he's in 2K15. Is he going to... Is he going to come full-time or, or what now? No, he's going down, I, downhill. I, I don't think we're going to see Sting next week. We're I mean, not. they're not going to have Sting come out on a regular Raw. I mean, if Sting's going to debut, they're going to hype that up a couple of weeks in advance, whether it happens on Raw or whether he appears at a big pay-per-view like WrestleMania yeah, or something like that. Other than Starcade I mean, 97, he's not really that associated with Hogan. Right, right. They did so, Thunder and Paradise together a few times. So they're, they're going to they're gonna either hype that up. I mean, it'll be you know a month hype like they did with uh, Dave Batista's return yeah. something like that where Sting's going to appear on this edition of Raw something like that or Wrestlemania or something but like that Hogan, but yeah. for the Hogan birthday celebration next week on Raw uh, they are going to have uh, some special guests um, I'm trying to get a hold of Rowdy Roddy Piper and the reason rumor? the reason I say that is uh, Roddy lives in Portland, Oregon, which is the host of Monday Night Raw next week. So Roddy should be in town. That's right. To, yeah, that's right. To, yeah. to appear on Raw next week. Uh, so I'm going to try to confirm or deny that, whether he's been contacted to appear on the show. And not only that, but uh, Scott Hall but. sent out a, uh, a tweet. It was uh, pretty interesting last night um, during Raw. Basically said, do I smell an NWO reunion or something along those lines on Raw next week? Hashtag and then, Raw, yeah. and then Kevin Nash went ahead and retweeted that. So you've got Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, well, and Hulk Hogan kind of teasing. It's worth mentioning that even before that tweet, when they announced the celebration, what we had heard was that there's going to be not really an official NWO reunion per se, not like the angle and the group is back and all that, but for the one night only thing, like they do at Old School Raw when Jake came back, stuff like that. Right. right. That, that, yeah. Yeah, that and, or like when they do, when Sean comes back and they do DX. Yeah, I exactly, guess. Exactly. Yeah, exactly the same. I, I, I'm down with that. 
Yes. Because, you know, I, I would be okay. Well, if you're not down with that, goes, we got two. No, I'm playing. I'm just joking. <laughs> well, uh, someone, uh, a friend of mine told me that NWO might be going into the Hall of Fame next year, along with Macho Man and, and possibly Elizabeth, because I would love to see that. I would love to see Elizabeth go into the Hall of Fame oh, finally. Nice. She deserves it. No, she's not. Wow, I thought Elizabeth was already in. Okay, yeah. so that yeah. would make sense. Yeah, no, the. Uh, Next year, they're talking about either The Rock or the NWO, not both, because both are considered, like, the you know, each year the Hall of Fame has, like, one main event induction. Right. Ultimate Warrior was the last one. There's, you know, Bret Hart was 1-1, one, one. Well, Hulk Hogan was 1-1. One, one. And I think also part of the reason that they inducted Razor Ramon this year is due to the fact that they want to also induct Scott Hall, if I'm not mistaken, well, they correct? Had, well, yeah, because, yeah, exactly. The, well, so, that and the, the fact that this year's... Induction, the, the the prime induct inductees all happen to be from the same era. Jake the Snake, Robert, that's true. Fucking, right, uh, right. Uh, Scott Razor, Ramon Hall. Who was that third one? Ah, uh, Warrior. Yeah. And Warrior. Yeah, all from right. around the same time period. That's why I thought Savage was going in this year, but he didn't. So. Right. Right. Anything else? We gotta. Uh, we gotta. Uh, get we gotta run, Jackie. Okay, I'll talk to you guys next week. Okay. Uh, all right. Have a good week. Sorry about uh, the family matters that you're uh, that you got going on. Be good. Okay. I, I will. I'll let my grandma know that you guys are thinking about her. All right. Her, her, be, no, thank you guys very much, okay? All right, be good. You too. All right, uh, if you guys want to call us up, it's 518-712-3070. It's good to have Jackie back, man. 518-712-3070. Yeah. I know, man. You know, we've had, I mean, there's times where we've had Big Vito on here, and he gets kind of in there's a... There's another uh, caller that had one that... Somebody else, yeah. yeah, not too long ago. So, anyways, get to our live chat room, WZROnline.com, slash chat, WZROnline.com, slash chat. So, Monday Night Raw from last night, they kicked things off. It was the authority. They had uh, confirmed that WWE sent out a tweet earlier in the day. It was uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. They were going to come out and uh, open up Monday Night Raw yes. last night. That's what happened. Sure enough, Triple H came out. And, of course, this is where the WWE Network stuff well, actually, started. Triple right? H came out with the whole authority. Triple Everybody H was all right. Triple H, Stephanie Kane, Seth Rollins. Randy Orton. And Randy Orton. Right, right. Yeah. They uh, they all came out. Orton and uh, Rollins were dressed up in their corporate yep. suits tonight. Their right? corporate, uh, yeah. And uh, basically, it's uh, you know he he plugs the WWE Network says that SummerSlam is going to be airing in a couple weeks on the network, which you can order for nine ninety nine. Talked about SummerSlam being two weeks away on the network to nine ninety nine. Like oh, yeah, I just said, yeah, yeah. Um, they said that Ambrose versus Rollins was going to take place on the network for nine ninety nine. You can see that match for how much? Nine ninety nine on the WWE what Network. A deal. He uh, also promoted the fact that uh, Dean Ambrose against Alberto Del Rio was going to take place tonight, and Seth Rollins against Rob Van Dam was clock. also going to take place tonight in Beat the Clock matches. Yes. So the winner of those matches. Or the winner of the beat the clock, whoever beat the clock, the fastest time would go on to pick the stipulation for their match at SummerSlam. See, I, Ambrose I know Rollins. that he said that in the opening segment, but they did not drive that point home very good to me because I remember while I'm doing play by play for the beat the clock matches, and there was a, a loop of time where I was in there. We were talking about finances and stuff, right? So I missed some stuff, but the, I really, at, when I was doing the play by play, was like, "What is this beat the clock for? What are they winning? What are they fighting for?" I didn't even really remember, because it was such a brief thing in that opening segment, because so much happened, and that was not the focal point, that they didn't really make it clear what the hell these guys were fighting yeah, against the clock I for, agree. at least to I me. I no, didn't, you're right, you're right. Uh, yeah, it slipped my Throughout mind, at least. Let me say this, too, uh, and this is, you know, I will see what the people in the, uh, in the chat room or what you guys think about this, but 41 times last night, they mentioned the WWE Network. For nine ninety nine, that's not all you gotta do. That was verbal mentions live on the show. That doesn't mention all the commercials that oh, aired. Right, right. Everything, the vignette, everything yeah. in addition to that. So they promoted forty one times during Raw last night the WWE Network. Here's the problem I had with it. It's cool. You're trying to get people to the WWE Network for nine ninety nine. The question I have, yeah. if I'm a casual fan, is where the fuck do I sign up for the WWE Network? The WWE Network, nine ninety nine. Okay, 
Where do I get it? <laughs> How do I sign up for the WWE Network? You I've told me 41 times now where to get the network. Obviously, it's you haven't be told me WWE.com, but I know what you're saying in that if you're a casual viewer like you where said, is this network? They should if if the whole point is to promote the product or you know uh, the digital service. It should be made clear how to do it. That all they said was, "This is what it costs, and this it's is what it is." It's nine ninety nine. Sign up for the WWE yeah. Network. How about go to WWE dot com to sign up for the WWE? Which they There's mentioned a, a here. few times, but not forty one times. That's where. Damn sure. Where do I get the? Where if I'm a casual fan and I'm just tuning into Raw and I don't tune in that often, but I hear all this talk about the network. Where do I get it? Where do I go to sign up? Tell me where to go to sign up. They didn't do that last time. A little bit of nitpicking. It's not that... I mean, if you're a fan, Raw has basically the same viewers every week. They know, Which makes it funny to me that they're selling it so hard without really offering anything. Right. What are they offering? Right. Like, you know, the same network we've been plugging for the last how many months for the same price is still available for the same price. And <laughs> it's not like, well, now you can get this for it. Because you got basically the same viewers, so they are well aware that you guys have a network. They should have came they're out. Well said. aware that it's nine ninety nine a month, and they're well aware what they get for it. Right. You need to convince them that no, you should sign up because of this or this or this. Which well, Triple H did that, where you're going to get the SummerSlam pay per view, you're going to yeah, get Seth yeah. Rollins, this, that, and the other thing. But that SummerSlam, all you got to say is it, sign up for SummerSlam. You get all the match. You know what I mean? You don't technically need to say that if you like. My point is, it's the same viewers pretty much every week. You know, give or I mean, I guess there's a lot of shit, a couple hundred thousand here and there. But uh, right, right. basically, anybody that will watch Raw or has watched Raw in the last few months, where they've been whoring the hell out of this network, knows full well that pay per views are included. Right. So all they're saying is this match at SummerSlam for now. Right. This match. Like, well, everybody already knows that the pay per views are included. So any match on the pay per view, <laughs> right? Obviously, they know is included. They need to come up with some kind of thing, and that's where we get into where well, you got to spend money to produce this special shit. That well, now you should sign up. Well, they we're were gonna doing give you this. that with the Legends House, but then Legends House the season's over. Well, that was so already in the can you know, too. Yeah. You need original content. You need but something like a money. like a Warrior Special, as as bad as and that. Sounds. I just rewatched that the other night. It was. Third time I've seen it. It was awesome. Still awesome. Every time. But still awesome. And we don't want, I, clearly, we're not saying we want people to die. Why would the Paul Heyman documentary come out on the network exclusively? Yes, put it on the My network. Do something like that. Knew it was out in the UK. This is how much I know. I knew it was not available yesterday to us, but it was available in the UK. You went and searched for it and downloaded it. Immediately all day yesterday, I'm like, well, maybe some UK guy ripped it and put it on a torrent site. Let me keep checking. All day I'm refreshing all my day. torrent site. Right, right. Never came out. This morning, as soon as I woke up, they, it was there. But if you had I the network, if you had the network at midnight, boom, right when it drops, bang, I'm you got it. In, and I might have signed up for that. You may have signed up, right? I love you're into that those stuff. documentaries, and, and a lot of other people, people are just like you. Most fans that is perfect for this network that don't watch the regular TV, that don't watch the pay per views, mm -hmm. they're still wrestling fans. They just can't stand the wrestling that's happening right now. Right. Right. But they love these documentaries right. because it's it's stuff from when they did love wrestling and it's the behind the scenes full story of Here's shit that they remember loving that is nothing to do with today, but now we get this full two hour behind the scenes story Here's of Paul Heyman. I don't like wrestling anymore, but I love DCW. Right. I love Paul Heyman. Right. Two hours of a behind the scenes on his whole life. But wait a minute. Career. Wait a minute. I'm signing up. Here's here's two sides to that. Okay. People like you that have that don't have the WWE Network, you would sign up for something like that for nine ninety nine. There's also six hundred and fifty thousand or six hundred and ninety thousand other people that do have the WWE Network, and if they put it up there on the WWE Network, that's six hundred and ninety thousand people. Some of those fans are going to watch it on the network, and they're not going to go out and buy it in stores. Yeah. So that takes away from the profit they're, that they're going to make the in stores. That's the whole point of the That's the whole point, though. But is to they, give them premium content I get, that you I get would that. normally pay for. But now, if you pay for this one service, you get it all. You're right. You're Just right. Just for your commitment of sixty dollars for six months, nine 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 a month. Anything you used to pay for, pay per views, documentaries. Right. They even said DVDs is going to pretty much be a thing of the past. We're not going to produce. Many more DVD. It's gonna if we have something you know like what? the warrior that's, thing. That's that a warrior idea. thing that should have been a DVD. That would have sold like crazy, especially considering the fact that he died. It would have been the topical. That would DVD would have sold like crazy. They, you know what? But they rushed it onto the network because it's like, oh, now we got this service to where we can immediately. You don't have to wait for them to just to to, to uh, roll that on a DVD to distribute a billion copies to put them in the stores. This and that. It takes Let me time. say this. The second warrior was dead. Two days later, we your got a idea, great documentary your, that you can sign up and watch right now. Your idea is genius. They should take 
a top name WWE DVD that's coming out, whether it be Brock Lesnar, Daniel Bryan, somebody like that, somebody that the internet fan base loves, yeah. somebody like that, and they should say, you know what, instead of this DVD hitting store shelves and, and being becoming available in Best Buy and places like that, this DVD is going to be exclusive for right now, for the next three, four, five months, something like that. We're going to put it on the network, and you get it on the network before it hits stores. Put it on the it's network. It's got to be a three, four month thing because most if people, if it's just a week or two, I'll if wait a week, a week or two. two. I'll, wait a week, uh, I'll wait a week yeah. or two and then go out. But if you do a couple of months where this is only going to be released on this DVD is only going to be released on the WWE Network, and then it's going to hit store shelves at a later date, a couple of months from gotta now. Be well, yeah. That's original content. You're debuting something. You're putting something on the network I agree. that people want. It. It's a good idea. Except you for had one point. And a guy like Heyman would have been perfect. Yeah, because the internet perfect. loves Heyman. That's the part I'll argue. The internet loves Heyman. Don't make it somebody the internet loves because those are the type of fans they're that are already signed up. You gotta make it somebody from the past that had a huge right. following that is probably a fan that doesn't give a shit about Daniel Bryan, Roman. Right. They don't give a fuck about those guys. Right. Like if you would have asked me, I remember a couple years ago when I was not watching, I talked about it many times, I was in the UFC, not this. Didn't have to do this for work anymore, so I just stopped watching. Who was like coming up around that time? Sheamus, maybe guys like that. I didn't give a shit about Sheamus or this right, or that. Right, right, right. These new guys. I didn't, I, and, and I heard they're big deals or this. They're the next star. Right. I didn't give a fuck about them because I wasn't watching. And I don't care what they're doing. Mm -hmm. A few times I try and watch, it sucks. I don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. But I still love the stuff that I remember from my from childhood. back in the day. Yeah. Right, right. So put that up there. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, I don't know. There, that's a good idea. It's a good idea. When you were talking about it, I said, you know what? Seems like a no they brainer. Should, they should debut DVDs on the network and then hold off on the stores for now. Put them on the network and then. You know, all right. Stephanie McMahon then grabbed the mic microphone in the opening segment. She said that uh, later tonight there's going to be a contract signing between her and Brie Bella yes. at uh, SummerSlam. Triple H then <coughs> took the microphone back, hyped that uh, Brock Lesnar against John Cena was going to take place on the WWE Network for nine ninety nine a month. For nine ninety nine a month. What did you think of that Cena Lesnar? We'll get to it. All right, we'll finish up. We'll finish up the opening segment and then we'll go in. That was UFC style type stuff. It was a UFC um, pay per view opener. It's um, extended. So uh, he, Randy Orton, uh, he's tired of waiting and uh, threatened Roman Reigns. Of course, the Shield music hits and uh, Roman Reigns comes to ringside and uh, he threatened to beat Orton down tonight for free. Yeah. Uh, not nine ninety nine on the yes. WWE Network. Made a little he's, joke. Let's do it right now. Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, SummerSlam match. Let's do it right now on Raw. Roman Reigns is willing to do it for free. Yes. Made a little joke little instead joke. of doing it on Raw. And uh, Triple H says, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is going to take place at SummerSlam. And yeah. you can order SummerSlam on the WWE Network. Yeah. Right? And, You've already got a so match Roman tonight. Reigns. He's already got a match tonight. And it's against the Demon Kane. Yes. So they go to a commercial break. They come back. And it's Roman Reigns against Kane. Um, Last for man standing. Mike Chioda. The ref. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Kyoto. Last man standing match. You Tell me out. about Mike Kyoto. Because that played oh, yeah. into the Mike Kyoto okay. thing. It was okay. a last man standing match, which is rare for Raw. Okay. And, it, you know, it didn't last crazy long. It was about last, 15 minutes. It was a decently 15, long minutes, for a TV right. match. It went through a break or two. Right. The finish. <laughs> okay. Tell me about Mike Kyoto, Matty B. Goldberg in his prime had a spear. <laughs> Then a jackhammer. Roman okay. Reigns has a Superman punch, and, and then when you spear. get up from that, a spear. Yes, sir. He hits a Superman punch. Hits the Superman punch. Mind you, anytime anybody's been hit with anything significant. Mind you, it's a last man standing match. So every time the guy's Anytime down, anything significant has happened, a finishing move, somebody hits. Yes. Somebody hits somebody with a chair, whatever, table, yes. ring post, <laughs> ring steps. One, two, two three. three. Can he get you up do by a 10? ten count. Yeah. Do a he ten. He gets count. up before ten, it's still going. So we a hit a line, Superman by the punch. way. Well, somebody said uh, on the commentary that they usually get up before 10. Right. And uh, I think it was Law that chimed in and said something to the effect of, yeah, they usually get up at around 9.99. <laughs> right. You know, I've got a stopwatch. It's tenths That's of the a very second. last minute, right? Tenths of a yeah, second. I get it. So I it get would it. be 9 and 8, 9, tenths of a second. Right. 9 and 9, 9. So he said they usually get up at 9.99. Right, right. right. So that was, well, that was good. That was but uh, so he hits a Superman punch. So he hits a Superman match, punch. And the referee's in the corner. He's standing there holding the ropes. The ref, I think, is, or, yeah. or he's just right there in the corner. Mike Kyoto's and just... And he just stares at a guy laying flat on his back in a last man standing match, and, and he's the, not counting. And the announcers, at this point, went Freaking. silent. 
They went silent. Oh, there's nothing. They go silent. There was nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was kind of this big pause on Raw where the announcers weren't talking. Basically, where Vince said, "What the fuck?" The man? referee just yell at these. The dudes. referee is just standing there, and and you know that Vince, like Boone said, was in the headset saying, "What the fuck? Is, <laughs> why isn't he counting? Why isn't he?" And then Michael Cole and that's or Mike somebody, Yoda, a veteran, a ref. veteran referee. I didn't recognize who it was yeah. at first, so I went on Facebook. I said, "Mark my words, that referee will be fired." I told you, but it's Mike Yoda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting there thinking, why, why isn't he counting? The dude's down. I mean, Orton's down. He just got hit with the Superman punch. And then finally, Michael Cole chimed in and said something like, why isn't the referee counting? And then they all Like, what, it, what yeah. is going on? And then JBL and Jerry Lawler well, jumped down like, I can't it. believe this. It this almost is overshadowed the, what is he the finish. Doing? It almost overshadowed the finish because they're freaking out so much that he wasn't counting for the, the setup spot for the finish. Right. That when the finish happened, all you're thinking is, what were they just freaking out about him not counting? Oh, the match is over. And then bang. Yeah. So so I think what was supposed to happen is Roman Reigns was to hit the Superman punch on Randy Orton. Orton goes down. The referee does the count. He gets up to a nine count, 999 count. Yeah. Then gets up. Reigns hits the spear. Referee counts to 10. Match is over. Would have worked out perfect. He gets up from the Superman punch. He doesn't get up from the spear. Or the finish... Could have been the Superman punch. The referee failed to count, no. so they had to go to a second finish, and they said, fuck it, let's improvise, and we'll do a spear right now. I think the original thing that I said, the Superman punch, Orton gets up at 9, referee counts to 9, yeah. and then Reigns hits the spear. There's ten, part of me that over. wonders, because if you think of it logistically... It would kind of make Pull the, up the chat. Let me see it would, the chat. It would kind of make the finish feel flat if they stood there after a Superman punch, and we had to just the lull of one, oh, yeah. two. No, I'm arguing against you. Okay, three, okay. four, five, all the way up to nine. Right. It's one more move, and then all over again. One, two. So maybe they were like, "Well, why are we going to make them count to nine, and then one move, which is not like a big long setup move? It's boom. All right." Here we go again. One, two. Oh, this time he actually got to ten. And nobody would buy that finish because it's like the uh, the Undertaker matches at WrestleMania. you got to convince people this is the finish or they're not going to fucking pop when he kicks out at two. So when the guy gets up at nine and then they spear him and then that time he stays down, maybe maybe it was just written out. But then why would the uh, announcer... No, I'm just yeah. throwing out that theory. Right. But then why would the announcers be flipping out? Obviously that was not... What was happening? But in my mind, I'm Mike like, Mike Kyoto fucked up, man. Mike Kyoto no, fucked up bad yeah, 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 yeah. during that. And the announcers called him I out. I think it was just a case sure of that Kyoto knew the finish, and when he saw the Superman punch, he's like, let me get ready to do my count after he hits his spear. Right. Hit the right. spear, hit the spear, hit the spear. He gets up, he hits the spear, one, two, and then doesn't realize, oh, fuck, I didn't even count. I should have counted the yeah. Superman punch when I'm he was down. I'm waiting to be in position right. to do my count for the finish, and he I forgot up. the semi-finish. He, uh, he, fucked, up, finish, uh, he fucked up pretty big, man. Yeah. Kyoto fucked up pretty big on, uh, on Raw last night. But anyways, um, and the announcers called him out. It was probably Vince getting in the announcer's headset saying, what are you so, doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, let's see, we had Mark Henry defeated Damian Sandow. Sandow came well, out. That's where they should have um, seen the Lesnar thing. Oh. Yeah, that was next. That right. was they next. showed that really early on in the they show. They showed it twice, yeah. Okay. All the way through. Uh, that was awesome. Talk it about was that. Either, like we said, it was either a UFC pay-per-view opener. Right. Like a longer version of that, or a shorter version of a, of a countdown to a UFC pay-per-view show. Right. He's in a right. black background sitting in a chair at an angle. The other guy's sitting at the opposite angle so that when they fucking clip it together, it looks like they're damn near talking to each other. Right. Uh, Heyman had appeared on the MMA Hour with Errol Hawani uh, earlier in the day and basically said that Brock Lesnar cut a promo. It was going to air on Raw tonight. Yeah. It was unscripted. There were no this, that, and the other yes. thing. It was one of Lesnar's best promos. Did you watch date. Heyman on there? Um, I didn't watch Heyman, but I read the recap that came out yeah. afterwards. Um, but uh, Heyman basically said it was some of Brock's best work. Now, I he thought said the Brock, match would be very well represented, and then he did say, "Yeah, it was well, something Brock taped did, a while ago." That Brock basically uncensored. came out and, and 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 said, "I don't play fucking games or something." like that. They bleeped it out, yes. obviously. But the stuff like that made it seem more real. Yes, like I am here, and I am here to fuck John Cena up. That's that, they what I'm shot it in a very realistic yes. type of way, like we said, UFC style pay per view intro or it was short count countdown show. It was literally just these two guys are gonna fight. Yep. 
Here's what they're fighting for. Yep. Here's their thoughts on the fight. Here's why they don't like each other. Right. Here's their issue. Here's their the consequence. Here's what's at stake. Right. And here's why you should spend nine ninety nine to watch an order on the Summer WWE Slam. Network. <laughs> right. But in the end, at the end of the day, I thought it was fucking awesome. It was great. I thought it was great. We put and the, I, 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 not just one guy or the other. They both. They both killed. Did a great job. Right. Right, and the Very way that it was job. pieced together, like you said, where it looked like they were face to face. Perfect. Man. The whole thing really was. Really mwah, I don't know why they don't do more it of that good. stuff. It's so basic, so simple, but it very is. effective. But it hypes pay per view main events. That's man. the stuff that people are and like. Not man, only I that, can't wait to see. Not only that, but Cena wasn't on Raw last night. Lesnar wasn't on Raw last night. And they still Hayman wasn't the coming fuck on Raw. Out of that match. And here we are today. Today, a day later. When the three guys that are involved in the main event, two of them facing each other, Heyman out there at ringside, yeah. right? The three guys were saying that the segment that aired last night on Raw, one of the best without the, the show, three guys appearing live, was one of the best segments. And they weren't in the even show. there, and they weren't even there, and they weren't even there. Lesnar only is contracted to do four matches a year or however many appearances. I don't know if they have to pay extra for him to if it if it counts if they air a pre-taped thing. Is that one of his appearances? Wasn't on he TV? there the previous week though? He was there last. But my week. point is, okay. so they could have recorded that, and it just because one it was day. all in one sitting. I wonder right. if it's I'm going to air on your TV show. I think the wording in the contract is probably very, very specific. You're, you're right. You're right. So you never know. I, so. I always wondered if it, if it, if that counts as one of them. Because if it yeah. doesn't, why don't they tape shit every single no. time they've got them and I say, the well, dates, maybe we can air this here. At least think, you have it. I think the dates that he's booked. I think they do as much as they can with him on that date. And then I think they it out. should, but they don't. This is the first time they've utilized them and taped something. Caller, you're live on WCR TV. What's going on? What's Turn your speakers down. Turn those speakers down for me, bro. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're all good. What's up? Hey, um, is that better? Can you hear me? Yeah, that's good, man. All right. Hey, um, just two quick things. Um, so the whole thing where you're talking about the WWE Network and the way they plugged it. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with this, but that just if you know, I'm someone that I don't have it and I don't really plan on getting it, but like. What they did last night kind of turned me off where I wouldn't want to get it because when you plug something that much, it just really, like, annoys. Like, I mean, I know if I, you know, every time I call someplace, hey, we have some, you know, great offers. Are, are you interested? You know, I'm okay. You keep plugging it and plugging it and plugging it. And it's like, eh, you know what? Maybe I don't want it. You have to plug it. That, And I know why they were doing it, but it's just like, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe some people got turned off by it. Like, oh, all right, enough. You know, we know about it. It's like, that really didn't get me interested in wanting to, to to get it. Like when you have to do it, like, and I know why, but it's just you know, and maybe that's just me, and nobody it's, else feels that way. But it's just kind of like, eh, if you have to do it that many times. Maybe I really don't really want to get it. Um, that, but that's just uh, that's just me. I don't know if you guys, no, you know, it's not that just you. All, but. It's not just you. Thank you for the call, by the way. It's not just you at all. What they did was they made the WWE Network. A heel. <laughs> they made Pretty it a much. heel. <laughs> Pretty much, man. That mixed with the fact that you never want to seem desperate. Mm -hmm. Because if you're desperate, there's a reason you're desperate. Right. Obviously, it's probably not as We great. know the reason why they're desperate. But it's probably yes. not as... But yeah, to the casual fans that don't know the business side of it, when right. they're they're dis desperate in promoting it, it must to a, to a casual fan that doesn't know about the business or doesn't care, doesn't even think about, yes. doesn't even cross their mind. Right. To them, it's like, oh, it must not really be worth it because they're trying so hard to convince us they're that it is. They're trying so if hard. If it was worth it, they wouldn't have to try this hard to convince us. They right. would just give us, and we, we would know. I agree. You know. I agree. This guy's been calling it all night. That's I think Cali. it's Callie. That's yeah. Callie. Callie, what's going on, brother? Callie. We're going to give you three seconds, Callie. Callie, you're on the air. Callie, three seconds. Three, two, one. <laughs> if you guys want to uh, call us live while we run down Monday Night Raw from last night, we're just doing the high points and low points. We've got about 15 minutes to go here tonight. 518-573-9270. Whoa. 573. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. 518-712-3070. Caller, you are live on WZR TV. What's Did you going say on? Oh, uh, yeah. 
Do you, do you think uh, the, is him mentioning nine ninety nine all night? Do you think well, maybe he's a little bit trolling to the trolling the people who uh, who gripe about the network not being worth it? Maybe. Uh, nine ninety nine. I mean, that's what the last guy just basically asked. Man, nine ninety nine. They they plugged it all night long. You know what I mean? And there's a reason why they plugged it so much. And does that tune people off to the network? Is that what is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's uh, exactly that's, what the last, thanks for the call. That's exactly what the last guy said, and we agreed that, yeah, it, it, a, it, it makes, it makes the network a heel. Right. Cause shut up already, you know, and you get annoyed with it, and you don't want nothing to do with it because you're sick of hearing about it. B, they come off as desperate, and anytime someone comes off as desperate, yeah, when advertising something or promoting something, the natural reaction to the consumer is, well, it's not worth it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be trying so hard to convince me that it is. Right. It would exactly. Just, it would be known, you know. If you guys want to call us, it's 518-712-3070, 518-712-3070, They uh, plugged Hulk Hogan coming back to Raw next week. Uh, yep. They announced that last night or yesterday on WWE.com, birthday celebration taking place next week. So we're going to have some special guests. We'll see who uh, shows up there. Nice, Caller, you're live on WZL TV. What's going on? Hey guys, what's up? I was just wondering if maybe you guys thought that uh, with the low network numbers, that's the reason why the programming has been a little bit better on the uh, weeklies lately. Um, you know what? I, I I think the program. I mean, we're going into WWE's second biggest pay per view of the year, right? Yes, so WrestleMania time. Basically, what he's asking is, is the WWE network the reason why the programming has been a little bit better the in recent TV weeks? programming? The TV programming, absolutely. Um, I, but in addition to that, you know, every year around WrestleMania, they go into WrestleMania. It's the biggest show of the year. Usually so after WrestleMania, after television that, after that first show, we go back to the same old shit. Right, television gets hot going into WrestleMania. I think we're going into to SummerSlam, the second biggest pay per view of the year in WWE's opinion. Not I guess this year. The Rumble or Night of Champions, Night Champions would be right, right, right. And they're still making SummerSlam. Yeah. I think every pay per view they're trying to give something right that's must see. Which to this point, to this caller's point, is exactly what he's saying. Yeah, that's why the programming's better, is because every month is another chance for them to hook people. Because if they didn't buy the last pay per view, maybe that angle wasn't for them. Let's give them something to buy this pay per view. But it's a SummerSlam. We'll see what happens at Night of Champions, and then, you know, yeah. like like the backlash pay per views or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, reviews such as that that are uh -oh. that are B that are B pay per views. Oh, did we lock up? So. We're gonna have to uh, yeah, we're we gonna did. have to X out the uh, the chat room, X out the browser first. You're gonna want to X out the browser. I can't X out anything right now. Look, hold on. Okay, that's in the middle of disappearing. Right now. Oh man, that's bad. All right, we're gonna be chopping out uh, just a little bit here, guys. But I think it's the browser. So if we can get rid of the uh, the live chat uh, for Hopefully a little bit there, yeah. uh, we should be good to go. Pull up the uh, the program down there real quick. Um, yep. There we, we cut did, off. Did we cut off? Yeah, we did. Oh boy! We should be back now. I would assume. Is it? Does it say back on? Yeah. Let me go yeah. check. Let me go check real quick. I'll check real quick and see what. See what's up. Just in case. No. Yeah. Just in case we're not on the air. Uh, we. Well, you wouldn't hear this anyway. But we have an archive. Uh, hopefully, I believe the last time this happened, it just made two different archive files, and I was sending those to. And there's the dog. Oh, God, I'm about to lose my mind. Uh, our archive guy, and he was able to join them together. So the YouTube archive was still one file. So the archive should be fine uh, if we did lose uh, our service just now, which I'm waiting to see the verdict on. Uh, we want your feedback after the show's over at Facebook.com slash. Reggie, you're not supposed to move when I do the slash part. It's the dog. Let's try it again, Reg. Facebook.com slash. Don't blink. Ryan Clark WZR. That's Facebook.com slash here's the other dog, Ryan Clark WZR. Or Facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR. Um, not really sure what to do to kill time. He does this to me a lot. I have nothing to talk about. I guess I'll just sit here. How long does it take to check if we're on the air or not, bro? I'm gonna start getting into something. He's gonna walk in and interrupt it. Here we go. Okay. Okay. My uh, my computer froze in there as I went to go check. My computer froze as well. But uh, 
the stream went down for a couple of different people, but uh, for others, it's still up and running. It's so, a little bit laggy. And I was so. explaining the last time this happened. It was not too long ago. Yeah. It made two archives. Remember, I told you I had to... Oh, that's off. right. That's two why things. the internet went slow because I was uploading right. two at once. Right. So if it did go off, we'll have a, a full archive. That's yeah, we're going to be... We're, we're good to go. file on YouTube. Yeah. Good to go. We only have five minutes left anyway, so um, Monday Night Raw, I want to talk, one last thing I want to talk about before we get out of here, and we can go right to the main event, I mean Sandow was used as a, as now, a yeah. joke Ambrose, last night. Ambrose beat Del Rio and beat the clock, and then they went to Rusev Sin Caro was we the mentioned commercial. That already, right. yeah, during the commercial. Uh, right. Ziggler beat Cesaro, uh, which Cesaro is still jobbing, but that set up Ziggler Miz at Heath SummerSlam. Slater over That's Seth what I'm getting Rollins. to now. The other beat the clock challenge was supposed to be Rollins and RVD. Uh, but at the last second, they switched it, so it was Heath Slater, Rollins, and then Ambrose came out and fucked with Rollins to distract him. Well, and the reason they switched it is okay. Rob Van Dam is um, Rob Van Dam is a uh, is a more credible is a more credible opponent. Mm -hmm. Here's Reggie. You guys haven't seen Reggie in a while. Can we get Reggie on camera here? Yeah, just talking about him. Yeah. Come here, Reg. He didn't freeze when I was Can doing Facebook.com slash. He's not supposed to move. Oh, he didn't know. Oh, is that what I want? He Oh, you give it. Can we get Red? Is he on? I think he's on camera, right? He's sitting Let's with see you. He's on he camera. Be, yeah. Yeah, I think he's on camera here. This is old Reggie. He's getting up there in, uh, in age. You're on camera, Reg. You're on camera, buddy. I don't think he speaks English. No, he doesn't. But anyways, um, so they uh, Rob Van Dam's a more credible opponent, but it kind of you can look at it two ways, right? RVD is a credible opponent, but then hey, RVD, fuck you, you're not in this big match. Yeah, get out of here. We're yeah. gonna put he. He's later in. But well, the first one went 15-some minutes, so the second one, right. we knew it wasn't going that long. A, because they saved it until right before the main event. They didn't right have enough time. They didn't have enough time so to even go 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, so he right. killed all suspense. It's not like Kenny beat the clock. Well, he either beats it or they have the match on the WWE app for you after the show goes off the air still in progress. <laughs> right, right. So we knew it wasn't going 15 minutes, and when they switched to Slater, it's like, oh, okay, now I know. Well, and the reason for it is we're going to put a jobber opponent in front of Seth Rollins so that he can beat him real quick, and then Rollins... Well, that's what we thought. ...a corporation member gets to pick the stipulation going into SummerSlam. That's what everybody was thinking, yeah. but they pulled the swerve. Dean Ambrose came out, was at ringside. He took JBL's hat, he poured a soda or a beer. That was a rib, by the way. We put that up on yeah. the website. Side, JBL, shoved it in the Money in the Bank briefcase and then was like waving it to, to distract Rollins at work. Right. Slater got the pin, beat him, and uh, does nothing for Slater because it's not like, oh, I won, so now I'm in the match. No, right. you're still that's nothing. You're still a jobber. You just right. got to win one. <laughs> right. Like right. Kofi Kingston's done against Orton and Cesaro. Right. And right. Real fluke. Doesn't mean fluke. anything in the long fluke run. Fluke wins. You know yeah, what I mean? We didn't have enough time to get into a lot of other stuff, but uh, I'm disappointed in the Jericho White thing. I'll say that quickly. I was not a fan of Wyatt's promo last night. Yeah, and he was on the Heyman DVD for one line at the very end, yeah. which added nothing to it. There was no point to have him there, and he was out of character. Really? He's the guy you don't put Take on. out of character. Don't put him on right. out of character. Out, on a, on a, don't on a, do it. Right. Like Undertaker for 70 years. You don't kill that, that, that stigma. That, I agree. That, that aura. But uh, uh, the Jericho Wyatt thing is under-delivering, in my opinion, and I, and I was so excited for it when he first came back, and that was the thing. I was like, wow. Right. Right. I think that's underperforming. I think both Dallas, who when Adam Rose and Dallas first came in, we disagreed. I thought Rose was going here and Dallas had no. Right. And you were like, no, Dallas is here, Rose is there. And within a week or two, I was agreeing with you. No, yes. Dallas is the guy, Rose right. isn't. Right. Or no, it was the other way around, it wasn't was it? It was the other way around. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But either way, now... I said both okay. Dallas was going to fail like it, and then I and came I, around to you. Yeah, okay, and, you're and right. And you, you were high you on You could have taken both. the credit right there if you wanted to. I, I did take but, the credit, but then you said, no, actually, it was the other oh, way around. Okay. Then I so said, you wouldn't have said anything. I said, all right, I'll okay. admit it. I, I was about to take the credit. All right. But uh, either way, I think they're, they're killing the Dallas thing now. He calls me out on it. <laughs> I, I think they're killing the Dallas... Oh, I love you, man. I think they're killing the Dallas thing now. I don't think it's going to... I think the way they've made that character now... After the streak ended last week and it wasn't all about the streak but it now wasn't. they're, they're booking him in a way where it was like now it is all about the streak now it's kind of over and, and now it's done and, and that's he lost, it. yeah he lost again and then listen you know. we got two minutes to go gold uh, and stardust came back real quick nothing they did not that whole build there were no promos. Led, led to nothing the adam rose segment backstage was uh basically to promote the horror film like Oculus, you talked about earlier yeah. now the main event, we can go a couple of minutes overboard here. Uh, let's see if we miss anything else. Brie Bella and Stephanie McMahon. Okay, for the second week in a row. Okay, yeah, that was last it. week, 
Last week, I had said Brie Bella, Stephanie McMahon in the main event position. They had the arrest angle the week before. Stephanie went to prison. Oh, that was it was last week. awesome. No, no, no the week before. Yeah, last week was a right. Okay, last week they come out and they main event the show and they're in the ring and they set up the match and Brie says, well, if you don't accept the match, then we're going to court. Yeah. Stephanie cries this... It was awesome, okay? The last two weeks... But not logical, awesome. because we even said last week, well, if she goes to court, what happens? She smacks somebody. She's not, gonna get a little fine. Not, and, not yeah. logical. Not logical. So yeah, why but was she then, that scared of going to court? But still, there was hope coming off last yeah, week. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Then we go into this week's Raw, and we've got a contract signing. Can Triple I ask you, do you think there. I'm gonna agree with you or disagree with you? Because you're gonna say that it wasn't... You said something earlier. I hated this segment. And you said something... Do you something, think I'm gonna agree or disagree? I hated this segment. I think you like this segment okay. because of something you, you said earlier. You finish and I'll give my opinion. Okay. The okay. problem I have is Stephanie McMahon, no problems at all. Stephanie McMahon is, this is some of the best work I have ever seen from Stephanie. The problem I have is Brie on the microphone. Brie comes across as nervous. There's some, she's scared to be in a main event slot with Stephanie McMahon. And when she when she speaks on the microphone, it sounds robotic. She's not something. very confident. There's She's a not vacant confident. Look in her eyes. It doesn't come across yeah. as it doesn't come across as I want to beat your ass. Like when she says things in the mic, she's like, and she's Stephanie nervous. and Stephanie yeah. at SummerSlam, I'm gonna beat your ass. It comes across as I'm gonna. Beat your ass. No, get out there, grab the microphone, and be like, it's Stephanie, Rick. at SummerSlam, I will beat your ass. Something like that. It doesn't, it comes across as robotic and line after line, like scripted lines, like saying exactly what she is supposed to say with no improvision, nothing, dude. And it, it kills it from Stephanie. Improvision? Is, Stephanie is awesome. Brie is. There's something with Brie Improvisation. No, and I agree. There's something with Brie that's missing. Do I think... Do I... Did I... Will I say I hated last night's segment? No. It was still good. Was it great? No. It was good. Was it... Anywhere near as good as the arrest angle? The, the arrest... The, the no. smack while she was in the crowd? No. Or even the week before that? I agree. When they did the thing... Not even in the same league. You're right. So it's right. starting to... Where yeah. you want it to go like you this. You want it to go up. Go and at SummerSlam, yeah. pow! There's the big thing. Right. It's already on the yes. way down now. I agree. So, and that's bad. Because you I still agree. got, what? I think next week shows the go-home Two show. weeks? Next week's the yeah, go-home. Yeah, 17th right. is the pay-per-view, I believe. So day after my birthday. So next week would be the last next Raw. Next week's the go-home. So thankfully, they're not way on the slope <coughs> down. But this was the beginning of, oh, it's not as good as it has been. So that leads to concerns. Hopefully the they have a hopefully they have a strong thing in the mind because we had reported a while ago that they had booked eighty percent of SummerSlam, including finishes, which means they had the build up completely done because they've already got how they're getting out of SummerSlam done too. Right, right. So they know where they're going. So maybe this was just one week where the, all right, we'll do a contract signing and then the big thing right okay. before SummerSlam. So hopefully next week they rebound. Peak the interest again, as opposed to continuing to go this way, right? Because they knew, well, we have this many weeks; these are our angles, right? So this will be this show, this will be this show, and this maybe just been the week where they didn't have a lot to really keep it going this way, right? But maybe next week they'll get it back. Okay, the main event at SummerSlam is Cena Lesnar. We know that yeah. Cena Lesnar and Heyman weren't at Raw uh, last night, so they or last week, right? and and they had figured. Uh, my thinking is this. They had figured going into SummerSlam, they had figured going into SummerSlam, Cena and Lesnar was clearly the main event. That's, you know, what they're selling the show on. Then they did the arrest angle with Stephanie McMahon. They said that was fucking awesome. The following week on Raw, they have them in the main event because the segment before was so awesome, right? Last week's segment, you come out of Raw, you're like, all right, that was pretty fucking good. You go into Raw this week and they do the same thing, and they're basically saying... That John Cena Lesnar is the top match. The, the match underneath that is basically Stephanie Bree. And I feel like the reason that they felt that is because of the arrest angle. But it's fallen flat in recent weeks. Before this, the Rollins-Ambrose stuff was 
fucking amazing. Reigns, Orton. It's, Orton it was beat awesome. Orton. And Orton Reigns. So Orton's why? beat down of Reigns last week. Was it last week where he beat the fucking yes, shit out of Yes, last him? week. So it was awesome. Why Why are Bree and Stephanie an angle that peaked up here and is going down? Yeah. When the Orton Reigns or Rollins Ambrose feud, they should be in the main event spot the last two weeks. The la- well, maybe not the last two weeks, but last, say, night. last night they didn't do Ma- shit for Orton Reigns either. They had Reigns and Kane. I know Orton didn't have anything to do with that, did he? Did he come out during that match and screw him? No, no. Reigns won no, clean, right? Right. And uh, I think that was it for Reigns for but, the whole night. Yeah, I, I believe. Ah, uh, dude, I was so excited. Uh, I'll put it like this: I was so Jericho excited. Jericho Wyatt started hot, and it's going this way. Like right. everything started. And everything now, started up here, and it's going, yeah. it's going down. But I, was I think so, Ambrose. I, was I think Ambrose Rollins last night is still this way. Okay, I screw agree. Ambrose. That's the way they did right, it. I right, put that, right. With the briefcase Rollins, and everything else. I thought that, that was still right. good, yeah. So put that in the main event slot. But it's semi-main, like main yeah. It's like they're going... Right, in the semi-main. But they're going in the opposite... You've already peaked with your with your angles on Raw a couple of weeks ago. That Raw, where Stephanie McMahon got arrested, Jericho cut that promo. I think it yeah. was the night after uh, the pay-per-view. Just when you were about to start... Going into this wasn't land. last week. No, this was like three weeks, two weeks yeah, okay, ago, two, two or three weeks, weeks ago. ago. It was two like the three, night yeah, after yeah. the pay per view. No, even last when you week started to build the SummerSlam. The Stephanie stuff and Brie stuff last week was good. I thought the Orton, last week it was it was it good, wasn't, but as, it wasn't good. as good as the yeah, week before. It's with the be hard to top that first one. I, I get the, that. The I get that. The crowd and but the last night it went down even another notch. I agree. I just said that. I agree completely. But the Reigns Orton stuff last week was probably peaked last week. Turn. So that two stuff. I'm just saying, other matches were at a peak at a certain point, and now they're doing this too. So all these matches, right. at one point, were like, "Wow!" And instead of it being the last impression we got of that until the On actual the go-off, show, instead they all had enough time, yeah. just enough rope to yeah. hang themselves to start going this way into the pay per view when you're supposed to go this way into the pay per view. Right. They right. started right. so right. hot I that agree. they left no room. How can you top that? You right. can't. Right. Can you match it? You kind of. You, you can maintain it, but they haven't been. They've been, yeah, you know. So. Stephanie McMahon is not the problem in the Brie Bella story. Brie's the problem. And uh, listen, I I, I think the booking's the problem more than any of the performances. I, I agree with Brie you about promo Brie. work. I agree with you about promo work. Let's, not good. let's say Brie killed that fucking promo last night. It still would not be anywhere near. The week before segments, it wouldn't even no, be in the fucking not. ballpark of the arrest and the slap in the crowd thing. Yeah. So I think the writing was a little weak last night for that. Like, all right, what's the big? Here's what they did. Here's what you're you're gonna insult her. You're gonna insult her, and then it's all gonna build a Triple H shoving you in a corner and Stephanie beating both your asses. Right. So it really depends, like you said, on the performances to make it something special. Right. But at, even at the best performance, it's just not as clever or is uh, uh, what's the word meaningful it's not as impactful as what they did the week before and certainly not the week before that they needed something a clever angle a clever storyline something that keeps it this way right and last night even if both Stephanie and Brie killed their promos that still would be a step down from what I they've agree. been doing. from the arrest angle so it was the writing that All right. you know mixed with the performance Matty Boone that's Tuesday night brother not not even close for me. It's That's a Tuesday, Tuesday night. night. You got a lot of work. I got a whole Tuesday to go. I got a lot of work to do too, yeah. man. I'm gonna go in there and uh, and work it up. You guys be good. We will see you next Tuesday night, eight to ten Eastern time. Next week is my birthday bash. My birthday is next Saturday. You and so Hogan, huh? next Tuesday, uh, you know, Hogan's having a birthday bash on, on Monday. Monday. We'll have your. I'm Tuesday. having a birthday bash on Tuesday. When's your birthday? So. August 16th, Saturday. The so night why before. are we doing it next Tuesday? What well, because that? we don't have a Tuesday after. The Tuesday after oh, is after my birthday, 19th. so we got to do it before my birthday. Right. So we're going to do it three or four days early. Okay. Okay? Does that oh, work? Good. I, we did mine, what, one day early? Yeah. Yeah, I fell on a Wednesday. But your birthday fell on a... No, we did yours on Tuesday. Yeah, but my birthday was Wednesday. It was, oh, it was you're one right. day early. It was yeah. one day. All right. Anyway, so uh, next Tuesday, hope you guys show up. It's my birthday bash. We're gonna have it live, baby, live. Right here. Oh, 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on WZR TV. Feedback. Uh, feedback. Submit feedback uh, on both mine and Matt Boone's Facebook page. Go to Facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Submit feedback. We're going to put a uh, feedback post up. You do the feedback post. I don't know what I'm doing. You just did it. You, we want to know what you liked about yes, the show. Yes. We want to know what you like about the show. You haven't memorized this? this? Over the, no, I don't. This really? Is your, this is your stick. I just said live, baby, live, and you couldn't even give me yeah. I did oh, say oh yeah. yeah. I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I did it. Watch the archive. I'll watch the archive. Either way. All the sticks, all your plugs are stuff I used to do when I was the host. You just memorized them. You can't memorize this one yet? Get this in your repertoire in case I ever leave the show again. That way you can be Matt Boone without being Matt Boone. We want to know what you like about the show. the show. Yeah, I get fired. <laughs> I gave you the show. I didn't want nothing to do with it. We want to know what you like about the show. <laughs> no. We want to know what you didn't like about the show. If you tell us you like something, we're going to do more of it. If you tell us you didn't like something, we'll do less of it. This is how we make the show exactly what you want to see. Oh, I'm off camera this time. And here, like Hulk Hogan's birthday. And, and Mr. Clark's next Tuesday night. You got his phone number, call him up. And uh, we want to know what you thought of the show. <laughs> Facebook.com slash MattBoonWZR. Facebook.com slash WZR. We'll see you next week, you punk bitches, for the Ryan Clark birthday bash. Fuck! <laughs>